Tim Hortons hockey's greatest duos trading cards are out now. And I, uh, I'm not going to lie. I got a winner pack. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, the Dallas Stars, oh, you know how they no, won game no. seven. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then they won. lost. Whoa. Whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever. They almost won. OK, uh, I got Wyatt Johnson and Jason Robertson as one card. So good. Mira Heiskinen and Jake Ottinger. Most of that is the 2017 draft, which is the vaunted 2017 draft, no. except for Wyatt. Wyatt, I think, was later. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wyatt's only uh, 21. Right? Yes. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. But that 2017 draft was a big deal for them. And then you got uh, I got linked by numbers. Kucherov and Hughes both wear 86. Oh. I like that. Oh. I got Jonathan Huberto and Maddie Beneers. They're both number 10. Ah, uh, lovely. TJ Oshi and Tom Wilson, teammates. And this last one, I don't know how Tim Horton knows, but it's Mason McTavish and Trevor Zegris. And if you follow my NHL 24 streams, you know, we just traded Mason McTavish away from the Leafs for Mo Sider. So oh. I think it's some sort of serendipity there that I got his card. Man, what's Steve <laughs> Eiserman doing that he's I know, trading right? Mo Sider? He, want, he wanted the center. Oh. How'd you get him in the first place? Uh, I, I forget what we've, we've flipped, but like a bunch of picks and I, maybe JT or something like that. Yeah. Oh. So Jesse's first move is always to trade John Tavares. It makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, uh, hockey's greatest duos trading cards. We're talking about two icons on every card, rivals, teammates, family, and more connected like never before. New Tim's hockey's greatest duos trading cards available at Tim Hortons right now, along with a delicious double double, which is always there. Always on offer. Oh, yeah. Always. And some Timbits. Get the 10-pack. Go. Let's do the show. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Well, we've had great hockey games. We've had terrible baseball games in Toronto. Oh, my gosh. And uh, No you know, basketball. No, some great basketball. Well, sh- Zero uh, basketball. You mean in, in Toronto? Oh, in Toronto. Yes. Zero basketball. Yeah, Zero no. basketball. I was thinking about uh, Shy Gilgis Alexander. And uh, No, that's not here. No, I know it's not here, but he's Canadian. In some ultimate so reality, that. he would be a Toronto Raptor. I know. Not, not only is he not I here, know. he couldn't. I think by NBA standards, be farther away from here. I know, but I'm just talking about he's Canadian. Fair. Uh, he's the best player right. in the NBA, Canadian, right? Think of how right? pathetic the Leafs are, right? How pathetic they are. Easily the best Toronto men's sport team going right. Yeah. Now. Easily. Yeah. <laughs> it's pathetic. That's bad. The yeah. Leafs. Ah. Thank God for the how PWHL. Good are, how good are the Argos? Bad. I mean, last season. I don't, I don't know, know if you, they were. I didn't follow the Argos really last. We season. won't get into it, but their uh, their their main quarterback was just suspended for something pretty bad too. So all right, yeah. So oh, really? uh, oh yeah, right, and, so and deservedly so. We're all PWHL Toronto. Yes, fans. we are. We're not all yeah. Matt. We yeah. are Nat Spooner truthers. That's the only team that exists. I love. I do love the growing trend of whenever you're like, man, Toronto sports, and everyone from the PWHL goes, don't you lump us in with that nonsense? <laughs> no, they're right. By the way, right. number one C, they're going to play in our, at Coca-Cola Coliseum. Yeah. It's going to be sold out. Like, it's going to be a lot of fun. They got to pick their opponent. Yeah. Uh, Minnesota? Nat Spooner's kid. Did you see, did you see the video they, they did? To Are pick they it? on Minnesota? <laughs> So, Damn. So Nat Spooner <laughs> Nepo baby. had a right? child throw a ball and whichever basket the ball landed into, that's the opponent. So no. the kid threw the ball and it landed in the Minnesota bucket. And they're like, Minnesota. Man, if you let a Leafs player do that, like if that was available to the NHL, it'd be like Boston, Florida. <laughs> yeah. Boston. Boston. It bounces three times off the rim and goes to Boston. Boston. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I actually, we, Jesse and I ran into Natalie Spooner during game three uh, when we were at the game and we were in the same box as she was. And she was just talking about how great the first season has gone. Um, and I read a statistic later that her 20 goals in 24 games are equivalent uh, in an 82 games uh, schedule as 68 goals. Wow. So Toronto has the two greatest goal scorers in hockey on earth right now. Dude, I love it. Isn't that cool? I love it. Yeah, that cool? super cool. I just... Love that. Hey, hey, Nat Spooner, Austin Matthews. We love this. We love this. Um, so uh, yesterday uh, we had, and I won't get into this yet. We got we got game two with the Canes and Rangers. We had uh, the Avalanche and Stars, and obviously game one of the Panthers Bruins has already happened. But none of that matters because the Toronto Maple Leafs spoke to the media. Yeah. Right. The media. Now, I, uh, I I pulled some clips from this 
And a lot has been made of these clips. And Steve, you actually did a video on the SDPN channel about yeah, these and it's clips. really good. Uh, but I want to I want to roll through them. <laughs> it was Why are you on, laughing? It was not on the SDPN channel. It was on the Steve Dangle. Oh, it was on the channel. Steve Dangle. Yeah, channel. that sounded yeah. wrong, but I wasn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's oh, right, okay. right, right. Yeah, because leaf stuff goes on the. Uh, no, I did. Oh, the, yeah, that makes sense. I did the round two prediction. I get it. Yeah. The round two prediction, which also did great. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I want to start with the quote that has made the most headlines based on how uh, it reads on Twitter. And you got to remember okay. whenever you read these quotes that if you see something and it's like, wow, that's completely outrageous. You might want to see if you can find the video on it because it may nine times out of 10. It's not as outrageous. The 10th time where it is outrageous, just as outrageous in person is is I mean, it's content gold. Mm -hmm. It's Christmas for that. But Mitch Marner made a comment about being a god in Toronto or the least being gods. Let's have a listen to it. Have you got it there, Jesse? Yeah, play this. Yay! Yay! And that's how they got Minnesota. Amazing. Thank you for that. <laughs> wow, that's exactly what you described. Isn't, it, this, isn't this adorable? Yeah, really. Yeah, so much better than cute. anything the Leafs are doing. Yep. Pull up that little baby. Pretty adorable. All right. That's an adorable. I like small humans because they're like, yeah, they're like just they're well, except for when you can't sleep. Mm. Small humans <laughs> when you can't sleep are no fun. I'll be honest. That's that's Rory. Hi, Rory. Rory. Yeah. All right, we can do Mitch Martin. And, and Natalie, who's been uh, a great person to deal with, we always run into her in certain circles, dating, dating back to the CWHL. Uh, it was, uh, you know, she's a she's awesome. We had to play uh, ball hockey against her, and it was friggin' that she, was that awful. was that was a nightmare. <laughs> A nightmare defending against her. <laughs> She's, oh my god! <laughs> I, I played very small, mm -hmm. and she played very big. Yeah, and scary. Yeah. All right. So here's Mitch Marner on being a god. Toronto long term. Yeah. I mean that'd be a goal. Um, I've expressed my love for this this place, the city. Um, obviously, I've grown up here, so um, you know we'll start thinking about that now, and you know trying to figure something out. What does it mean to be a to be a Maple Leaf? Uh, it means the world. Um, obviously, we're looked upon as, um, you know, kind of gods here, to be honest. And, um, you know, something that uh, you really appreciate and the love that you get here from this fan base and this, this tension is, um, you know, kind of none like any other. So um, you saw it with uh, the Raps a couple of years ago, you know, the love that they still have for a lot of those players that they had to trade off this year. Um, and that's kind of the love you want. Mitch, is it? All right. So we'll stop it there. Now, let me ask you something. Is there anything about that quote, just yes or no, mm -hmm. that is untrue? No. No. Jesse, anything about that quote that's untrue? No. No. Does anything about that quote rile you up and get you mad? Not in the slightest. Jesse. No. Okay. So let, let's just put that out there. Now, I understand how it reads online. It reads I horrible. I completely get how it reads online, but then you listen to the rest of what he says. And also, it doesn't even read that bad. I mean, it's it's kind of it's true. We do worship our athletes here. And at the end of the day, he's showing appreciation for the city. I know the thing is right now to dunk on Mitch Marner. I didn't like his play in the playoffs either. Most of the time, it's a toxic situation. But let's let's be honest about this particular quote, right? Yep. Straightforward. That's a nothing, nothing but hey, they were treated really well here. And I want to stay here long term is what he's saying. Yes, that would be the goal. Okay. The lead in was, do you want to re-sign here? And he's like, yep. And then he said, we're looked at as gods here. Like th that. What's it mean to be a leaf? Right? Exactly. A it's a guy who understands the mantle of of being a leaf. Um, and, you know, pregame, you're always seeing him interacting with fans with signs, giving them pucks, giving them sticks, uh, you know, signing autographs. He understands. Mm hmm. He understands, and um, I think there are plenty of legitimate reasons to criticize this guy. We don't need to go making them up. Right. Um, and that, to me, just felt like a completely made-up reason. Well, I felt like I, it was like borderline like bullying. Like, what are we talking about well, here, guys? The second, so I watched the press conference live, and the second I saw it, I'm like, no one's going to understand that. Like, right away. But I'm I like, think that people do terribly. understand that when they see it. When they see it set. Yeah, but they don't. They don't. How many people you think saw that clip and how many people read it? Oh, I, I most people read it. Yeah, man. Like, it's, that's what I'm saying. Most people don't don't watch these things. Yes. Yeah. So I think and I just a, want it's important. It's very important. I wanted to dispel. And what's it? Listen, if you're a, 
It's important if you do it for a living. Well, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Fung, I don't know how important it is. Like, it's no, like it's important if you're gonna have a passionate opinion about it. Yeah, no, people have passionate opinions about things they don't know all the time. Oh yeah, that's the half. That's ninety percent of the internet. Yeah, I think I think to say that you a requirement for a fan to have a passionate opinion is be as educated as you can be on the subject. Uh, is uh, that's a nice ideal that no one will ever strive to be. <laughs> I know that's like it's like going like, hey, wouldn't it be great if we had a so society free of alcohol? It would sure eliminate a lot of problems. They tried that. How'd that go? You know what I mean? It's one of those <laughs> is, where is that it? Is that's that what the it same? is. We can have high ideals, but All if you right. can't execute on the ideals, what's All the point? All right. What so, do we got? What do we got? That's important. I want to get you. If I, that I, one was unimportant. Here's what's here, important. Here, here. Let, let me let me give you one. A, a recent one. Um, it's like. All the TikTok content and Instagram content and YouTube shorts content around the Kendrick Lamar versus Drake beef, yeah. but not listening to any of the songs. Ah, because you're just like, but the content's so good. And it's true. Sometimes I watch the videos and I'm like, how many people have actually heard the songs, though? Yeah. You know, yeah. people just want their, they They pick a side. That's all it is. They're, yeah. It's like a team sport. Um, now, Kendrick, by the way, uh, anyway. I'll yep. get to let's get to the quote that actually did bother me. Hmm. This one bugged me, Sheldon and it's keeps not saying let's all have fun before Game Seven. No, that whatever. Uh, <laughs> Dude, that is guys get motivated different ways. Like maybe know, he knows yeah. that's the best way to motivate the locker room. You can't dump on him for no. That. I know there's I, a video going around of this uh, older Leaf fan who's like, oh yeah, let's all have fun. <laughs> and I was just like, ah, oh, we all know well, at I, least one. If Leaf I've been, fan if like I was that. born in like 1968 and I lived my whole life and I never saw my team win shit, I'd be pretty pissed too. When someone says let's have fun, yeah, yeah totally. I get that. I yeah. get. That. Listen, I get, I get the boomer <laughs> angle of yeah. I can't freaking take it with this team anymore. I get it. Yeah. Oh, I get it. I aged all, 30 years when I saw that clip. Yeah, <laughs> this this clip bothered me. This clip bothered me, and this is from a great captain, in my estimation, and mm -hmm. a really really good good person. Mm -hmm. This bothered me. Let's play it. Well, we're right there. I think, you know, obviously uh, you lose in game seven in overtime uh, against a team like Boston, you know, just goes to show how how uh, how small the difference is, how small the difference is. And, um, you know, a lot of things could be. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Laughing in the emotions. background. The laughing in the yeah. background <laughs> couldn't have been more perfectly timed. I missed that the first time I listened to it. Can you play that again? Sure, sure. That couldn't have been more perfectly timed. Small the differences, how small the differences, and um, you know, a lot of things could <laughs> <Now>. be. Uh, <laughs> it sounds is, like a laugh track. That's rough. That's rough. Uh, that's Big Bang uh, Theory. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, just goes to show how how uh, how small the differences, how, how small the differences, and um, you know, a lot of things could be. Uh, that's not great. A lot different where that's we stand great. today, just one shot away. So um, okay, so let's pause just, this. Just the way. We yes, in a vacuum. Yes. In a vacuum, yes, but if we're not. This was the Leafs' first year making the playoffs after a rebuild, and this happened. We'd be like, ah, nuts. Mm -hmm. We're not living in a vacuum. No, we're not living in this just one year. We're living in year eight, and 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 actually, you know what? I'll give you one. I'll give you a, a mulligan. I'll give you year seven because the first year against the Capitals wasn't some dramatic meltdown. It was just a, t a young team that was overmatched by a team that should have won the cup that year and didn't. And on top of that mulligan, I'll give Tavares another mulligan six because he's only been there for six. Well, there you go. Okay, so so fine. So it's still six, though. That's and, so many. And so Holy I, I want to take that and compare and contrast that with uh, Morgan Riley's answer. Yeah. And, and this, to me, I was really ticked with Morgan Riley after... Uh, he and Mitch Marner refused to come out and talk to the media after game seven. I still am. I still well, am. I th no, no. There's no excuse. You're a leader once. You're a leader all the time. You wear the assistant captain. I know the players respect him. I respect him. I love Morgan. I was really surprised. I, I agree. The The way I look at it, though, is, is sort of like Connor Hellebuck not talking. I'm like, okay, well, when the dust settles, you better have something to say. And then he was probably the most insightful. Yeah, but Connor Hellebuck didn't talk for any game that series. I, which is kind of nuts. I think it was uh, like you shouldn't do that. You should talk. Yeah, that was a bit too much. And but I'm then sorry, you better Steve, be really. You don't get after. to. Do you get to pick and choose when you're an owner of this company? You're an owner all the time. No, this guy wears an assistant captain. <laughs> Seri no, no, don't laugh at that. I'm serious. If I think Jesse and I are just making fun of all your comparisons. Yeah, yeah your you're, comparisons today okay, are but out of control. Guys, seriously though, no, no. Let's. I want to have a real conversation here. Yeah, it's like a horse. If you're a leader. A penny, if you know? you're a leader, yeah. you're a leader all the time. Yes. If you're if you're in football and you're wearing that fucking band around your arm because that's you're the captain, you're part of the captain group. 
You have to be a leader all the time. Oh, I thought it just looked cool. Yeah, well, it's not. It's not just oh. that. It's not just to show off your biceps. Oh. My point here is that I still think Morgan Riley and Mitch Marner aired when they didn't come out and speak. I still think that that is something that management should address. I doubt they will. I know from a few people that the Leafs PR staff have been very difficult to deal with this year in particular and have let the Leafs get away with not speaking when they should. And that is, to me, not conducive to a winning culture. Uh, but I want to give Morgan Riley full marks for this answer because John Tavares said we're right there. What did Morgan Riley say? What went last one year for Morgan? How close do you think you are to the goal that you mentioned? Um, I don't want to stand here and, and, and try to tell you that we're, we're on the doorstep of, a, of anything. Um, because, you know, we're sitting here today doing this. Um, but the belief, the belief is there that it's attainable. Um, but there's work and improvement that has to take place. Um, so to, I don't, so how close are we? I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, it feels both attainable and a ways away. And that's what, that's what drives you as an individual. That's what drives a team forward to either have success or we'll see. All right. So well, I guess that's the end of the that day. That was so close to, it feels both attainable and unattainable. And then he chose different words and I'm like, Oh, Morgan, good job. <laughs> good job, dude. I, this we've, we've talked before about <clears throat> how NHL players are, well, professional athletes are just ridiculously competitive. Like they're just wired different from you and I, like there are a lot of things where we probably overreact, but there's a bunch of things where we look at and we go, what's the big deal? And it's because they're super competitive about everything. If every year you were like, do you know how much easier it would be to fix the Leafs if they simply got their asses kicked? It'd be way easier. Like think every year, every single year, losing six of the Capitals, five of the six games go to overtime. Erase the three, one deficit against Boston, losing game seven. When you go into the third period leading, when you go into the third period leading, don't worry. That'll be a theme. Um, seven games against Boston, get your ass kicked in game seven, but you were up three, two in the series. Uh, one of the most miraculous comebacks in NHL history in game four against the Blue Jackets, you lose in game five. Uh, you're up 3-1 uh, in the series against Montreal, you lose in game seven. Got your ass kicked in game seven. Uh, you're up 3-2 in the series against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Goes to seven, you lose 2-1. And there's respect in the handshake line. You finally beat Tampa, really tight series. There's three overtimes, you win them all including a 4-1 comeback. And then you, Florida and largely outplayed, let's be honest. And largely outplayed. Then Florida kicks your ass. That was the first time that a team truly kicked the Leafs ass in a playoff series. Kicked their ass, wasn't close. And then this year comes around, you're getting your ass kicked and you find a way to come back. You play some of the tightest hockey you've ever played. You're leading in game seven again in the third period again. With what, five minutes to go? Uh, it was a little bit more than that. But like, holy shit, you coughed it up in like 80 seconds. The, it This has to feel like torture. And I don't blame competitive people for looking at that and thinking they are right there. But, you know, if you were looking at this in a vacuum, which I think these guys might tend to do, just because they look at each season as a season. I could understand wanting to run this back. I could understand thinking, man, we're right there. This is going to be torture if Boston beats Florida. It's going to be torture if they go all the way to the final. And Why, why does that make it worse? Well, it's going to make it worse because I think it, it strengthens your belief that, damn it, we're right there. We had them. It did not every team they've faced in the playoffs so far go to the Stanley Cup final? It's a ridiculous percentage. Florida in 23. Um, Tampa. Tampa in 22. Uh, Montreal in 21. Columbus died. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Boston in 2019. Mm -hmm. Boston got their ass kicked by Tampa in 2018. Uh, and the Capitals only went two rounds. So lost, since lost 2019, every team that uh, has eliminated them in the playoffs, if we don't count the play-in round, has gone on to the finals. That doesn't make anything about their eliminations better. So, no, it hasn't. And, you know, we learned this going back five years to the 2019 series when they played a really tight game. I mean, geez, if they played a, a tight game and won 2-1, in game five of the 2019 series against Boston. Well, the Leafs just did that twice mm -hmm. against Boston, and that saved Babcock's job, right? So I could understand all those years going, yeah, but we were, uh, you have to look at the big picture. Yeah, and I think the saving Babcock's job point is so crucial here because what happened in that instance, in that one vacuum game where it's like, oh, they're so close. Let's run it back. Let's bring him back. And then they brought him back. And what they realized was that the initial assessment of that this isn't enough and we should have fired him just was delayed five months. And then they fired him in December. And let's stay on that point, Jesse. So we keep saying Shanahan, Shanahan, Shanahan. It's got to be Shanahan who pays with his job. And you get um, used to be like Damian Cox talking about, like, do people even know what the president does? It was very. These are never been. Uh, no, he was. He just blew it. Um, there are, you know, there's Kyle Dubas. People forget, and I got a, I got a ridiculous memory for this stuff. October, November of the 2019 20 season, and people forget it because it's COVID, and I, I can't blame you. Remember Dubas freaking out on camera before overtime yes in a game against columbus yes and you can read his lips clear as day they started a weird group of people i don't remember who it was but you can read his lips clear as day he has to know they figured out something 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 don't know what it was and columbus ended up winning that overtime um dubis i think if it were up to him i think that would have been it mm -hmm. i think babcock would have been done after the 2019 series and this is just me theorizing but the guy who's gonna keep his job by the sounds of it mm -hmm. because he's gonna speak to the media on friday brendan shanahan the guy who's been here for a decade i think was probably a roadblock in babcock getting fired and he right. wasn't fired until it was obvious there was nothing left for it right so when i talk about shanahan th this is the sort of thing like i wonder if him with his ultra competitive brain and he's you know he's been through this and won so many things in his career i can't help but wonder if some of the leafs bullishness on themselves if some of their willingness to run it back comes from him dubis was right on the verge of trading one of the core four it was very obvious that's what he was about to do and he paid for it with his job they kept it together, and here we are again, yeah, a so year later. What Brendan Shanahan is going to do is make the same mistake over and over again because he's being allowed to make that mistake and run it back again. And it's the same Babcock mistake that he's making with himself here in that he thinks nothing's wrong, and he thinks we're on the precipice, and it's so close, and we got to just keep it all together. I think it's funny that, Man. in retrospect, that you decide to keep a coach based on his Game 5 performance before the series is even won. And that's what they did in Boston. They had a great game five. And they're like, okay, we're keeping Babs next year. What about game one? Well, it, Let's make judgments and, on and game And I remember one. you lost it in the studio. It was great. It was really great when we did in the pure later studio. As they like lost 5-1 in game seven. Are you fucking No, no, but remember, like, remember the next season where we were like, you know, they should have let this guy go. And Jesse and I were like, well, that's not how these corporations work. That's also part of it too, right? They're very slow. They're very deliberate, which is why Babs hung on as long as he did. Right. They, they just don't move on from from people that quickly. And I'll tell you, um, uh, I, I have they moved on from me pretty quick from you. Do, uh, I made I made uh, I, re I remember when I was working uh, for and I know this isn't the same. I don't give a shit, though. I'm going to make the comparison what? when when I was doing media there, like uh -huh. editing highlights and stuff. I used to joke uh, with a coworker of mine. I go you know, cause we have these contract jobs. I'm like, well, they're not going to let me go. I don't make anything. And then they did. You know what I mean? So why are you keeping the dude 
Who makes millions and millions and millions of dollars? Who's doing a shitty job? Because it's it's very different. I know it's very it's different. Very different at that level. Very very. Different I know at that it's level. very different. <laughs> but like they can make decisions like sure. that. But you're you're. I guess I wasn't a good enough drinking buddy. You're twelve. I didn't tell the right jokes. Like you, what is it, Steve? That's Steve. not the same. That's not. I don't give a shit. <laughs> you're talking about a twelve dollar an hour employee that a, a company views as twelve dollar an hour. What were you making? Okay, there, fucking Scrooge McDuck. What were you making? Not that. What were you making? <laughs> Less. Less. It was, was a, minimum wage back then. Well, it was six uh, or seven. No, one day. So it was a. I got a monthly fee, mm -hmm. and one day I tallied the um, number of hours I worked, and I shouldn't have because yeah. I realized what I was making per hour. And um, had I not been working for the team I'd been cheering for my whole life, I would have quit on the spot. Well, yeah, and that's the thing is that teams. You know, traditionally sports teams. It was like five bucks an hour. Everybody wants to work for them yeah. so they can charge less. And now, how old were you? Like 19? Yeah. I uh, <laughs> no, I was uh, 22. But Jesse, Steve yeah, had a good game five. I think it's the same thing as Brendan Shanahan's job. <laughs> if, we're, if we're looking at it objectively. So, so here's, here's, here's where I, I want to take this is that. I didn't cost this team nearly as much money as Brendan Shanahan. Had. Yeah, we don't know that. He also has made them. How bad were your highlights? He has also made How good them. were your no, highlights? No, he hasn't. Yes, Steven. Come on. He's made them a fortune. How many times should they have gotten past the first round? I agree. But you're looking at that is a You're leaving millions of dollars on the table. Yes, I think I think that's a fair point in that his performance is also tied to the team's performance and the play. Chris Johnson brought this up and he's like, you go to the second round, there's three extra home dates and that's also tied to the revenue. Right. And yeah. what they will say and what he will argue and what he will be successful in arguing is, yeah, what was it before? What? Oh, yeah, they were doing a fucking horrible job before, which means he's doing a great job. That's that's how he'll argue it. And that's and how that's, it will be argued. And, but does anyone buy that? I think people do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing. Rubes. When you're looking at it from a corporate perspective, robable, they look at Hang on. Let me finish people. this. Let me finish this. <laughs> when you look at it from a corporate perspective, they go, okay, we have the known quantity. Mm -hmm. Is the known quantity giving us exactly what we want in terms of results? Not quite. However, sponsorships are up. Season tickets are up. Uh, in terms of not just the amount of sponsorships, what they're charging for sponsorships. Mm -hmm. If I told you what it costs to just buy official partner of the Toronto Maple Leaf status, you'd fall off your chair. And that's before you've spent any money activating that partnership. And the reason that they can do that is because they've had this amazing run of regular season success. And the in-game is better. The, the fan experience is better if you can afford to go. Uh, it, it, all of that stuff is is better under Shanahan, and that's sure. his direction. It and so they is. will they will look at that and they'll go, okay, that then we got to bring somebody in, mm -hmm. and we got to get them up to speed, and then we got to hope and pray that they can do a better job than Shanahan. Well, then how do you how do you that's how they're going to look? How do you then tell this man who scored six hundred goals and is in the Hockey Hall of Fame, you're doing a great job? Fuck off from all the hockey decisions. I don't know. That's that's a board decision. I think. I think the way they should be looking at it is the same way. Like, I, I understand the point and that they're they're wildly successful and all that stuff. But the way Alan Walsh talks about how Gary's running the NHL and how successful it's been recently, like they've gotten revenues yearly up to six billion dollars. The NHL is ge generating revenue. But when Alan talks about that, he's like, yeah, it's widely successful and way above anything. All the owners ex uh, expectations are, but it should be in the billion. nine billion. 10, 12 billion dollar area. And that's how I feel about Brendan Shanahan. I think that's how the MLSE board should look at Brendan Shanahan. Yeah, it's, Gary, you made six billion dollars, but you should have made double that. Yeah, Brendan, this team is great and has wildly successful and turn around the franchise and all that stuff, but it should be better. You have all of the resources here. You should be doing more with what you have here. And I think that's a failure in my eyes. They clearly don't look at it like that. But if you're falling that short of where you should be, I don't care what gains you've made we should have x three x what Bas you've done and basic math you make more than anybody else and you are not experiencing near the same success as almost anybody else yep yep and listen come on I, guys I'm, what I'm, are we doing i also i also want to say this um maple leaf sports and entertainment more than than uh, I think that they've let on were severely hit like a lot of teams um, in their month to month revenue over the pandemic. Huge. All right. 
And so what they, what teams want right now at the executive level is stability. And so you have to account for that. You have to, if you, if you want to understand it, listen, we can rage all podcasts about it, but I can tell you that that's what they're looking for. Well, and that's why Dubas was fired. Because first round exit, first round exit, first round exit, first round exit. No, he wasn't. Second fired. round exit. He wasn't fired. Whoa, for whoa, that. whoa, 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 whoa! That's way. That's way too unstable. We've had too much success. First round exit. Oh, yeah. That oh. the the stability thing goes against firing Dubis goes against uh, that stability thing. Because what do you do a month before the draft when you have a bunch of big decisions to make on your core four? Well, like, they obviously trust Shani. It was yeah those and, decisions because he's the one that had ultimate decision. Brendan Shanahan with these things. Well, okay. Do you want to know what I've heard? Sure. What have you heard? So I know on pretty good authority that one third of the board was ready to move against him if they were able to get out of the first round. Mm. One third, the other two undecided or unknown. Mm. Okay. Um, the uh, they had a meeting. This is what I've heard. So that the first part is what I know. Here's what I've heard. They had a meeting about this a few weeks ago. It was a board meeting. They had a conversation. It was broached. If the Leafs don't get out of the first round, then what? And from what I understand, uh, and again, what I've heard and cannot verify is that Keith Pelly came in and said, no, nope, uh, uh, Shani is the, the guy I want to stick around for at least one more year. And the reason is he's just taken over. Now, we've talked about this executive thing for a while. It's, you know, it was like what sh when Shani took over um, his position with the Leafs, he wanted to retain Randy Carlisle because he didn't, he hadn't had a chance to look at the organization. They tried to re-sign uh, Dave Bolin to a five-year $25 million. Uh, and thank God the Florida Panthers upped their offer. Mm -hmm. So Bolin, who never finished that deal, mm -hmm. didn't stay in Toronto mm -hmm. for five million bucks a year. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not out of the realm of possibilities. I think what you're going to see tomorrow, he's going to see Keith, Brennan, and Brad out there. And they're going to say, we got to make some changes and not much else. You're you know not going to see. And, and so, so the, the, when, when the, when the board meeting is supposed to have happened and again, haven't been able to fully verify it. The conversation was, listen, it's, if we do this now, we throw ourselves into the same chaos. We found ourselves in last spring when Dubas was let go. Who did that? Well, no one. Okay. No one's saying it in that specific thing, but they're saying, don't, don't throw us into the same chaos. Don't take me literally on that. What I'm saying is they don't want chaos this spring. They want continuity. So it's trickle up. It's trickle up. We all thought Keefe was done and Brad Treliving comes in. Oh, I just got here. A year later, Keith Pelly takes over. Are you going to fire Shanahan? Oh, I just got here. Ah, it's just millionaires playing fucking merry-go-round. This Here you go. Like what? Adam, Adam, like I'm just telling you for what God's heard. sake. Just what I've heard. I I think a big problem with the Leafs is they're a little bit of an anomaly. Like they're in a they're a <laughs> I'm trying to come up with a gentler way of saying they're a they're an abomination of sport. Because the way this is supposed to work is when you lose, you die. When you lose, you fail. It's supposed to be a results-oriented uh, business, and it's not right now with the way the Leafs are working. Monetarily, though, they're successful, and that's what they're looking at. Okay, how is this remotely different from the pension plan days of 20 years ago? I don't think it is. I'm just telling you. Uh, listen, I think they're upset about the lost revenue, but I think they're also going to point out and go, well, we made more money this year than we did last year. Okay, okay. How about this? Fuck off out of the sports realm then and go run a grocery store. Yeah, as a fan. Go, go, go you know, ma make a shoe line. Go get involved in any other business. You win or lose. It's sports. Well, I, Are you I think, fucking joking? As a fan, you would hope that the ownership of your favorite sports team would recognize that it's more than about the bottom line and that you wish you had ownership in there that recognized the results on the field of play are what matters the most to the people who care about your team and are the reason that you have all of those revenues. And if that those results aren't coming, it's time to make results so that they can. It's time to make changes so that those results do come. Well, and so here's here's what... My, my thought on that is, and I mentioned this a couple shows ago, and I'm, again, I don't disagree with anything you guys are saying. I'm just telling you how they're going to look at it and how they're going to look at it is we have like clueless three money losing clueless. properties. TFC loses money. 
Marley's lose money. Mm -hmm. uh, Argonauts lose money. Okay. You got the Raptors who are in a full rebuild because they refused to make a move last year that could have probably turned them around. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. Ah! I'm telling you. That's why they want continuity. And that's why Shane's going to stay. What, what about that for, made you freak out? I mean, it, the Raptors, it was obvious. The Leafs, they're bad because what? The, ra the Leafs are not bad. No, no. But the, the Raptors are bad because what? Because Masai would not move on from uh, his his key players last. It's also it's also trade completely deadline. different scenarios. Like I, I don't think that was the thing to get you all upset. It about. comes back to the same shit. No, but they they won, Steve. <laughs> they, like I don't. You're comparing a team that won a championship, yeah. and then had a COVID year where things oh, they had the bu and then the the repeat year the bubble season they were this close to beating the Boston Celtics yeah they were that, if that exists in like real life they probably beat the Celtics or in the finals again I, you know I and do then, agree with and that and then they have a COVID season where they're in Tampa and it's a wash they get a great draft pick in in Scotty Barnes they mm -hmm. come back eh things aren't looking too great but you have a top thirty player on your team plus uh, Lowry's still there he moves on you have Van Fleet you run it back with them you believe in your core because they want a championship and what you're seeing with Siakam right now in the playoffs. And OG in the playoffs, you had pieces there. There was all this. Uh, the point was get to the playoffs. All right? I'm trying to say is don't just yell about the Raptors and say, ah, they did the same thing as the Leafs because not the and same at all. Had, and sports, had the different Raptors games. won the play in game last year, which they came close to doing. They were they were bad last year. They were. But had oh, they won the play in game, which they were in the lead for the majority of the game. Yeah. I was there. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, here, wait, let me Google something real quick. Did they win that game? No. Mm hmm. But I Jesus! think MLSE board looks at this as more than just the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, yeah, and, and I, I don't think they do. And I am upset that I cheer for a sports team that has an ownership group that's this inept. All that said, uh, I think what's going to happen tomorrow is the straight ahead boring answer. That's always Friday. Fr excuse me, Friday. What always happens in this is that you hear a bunch of wild rumors and guess what happens? The most boring thing. Trust the most boring answer. The most boring answer is Shanny, Pelly, and tree are up there. They are tree living, tree laughing, and tree loving. And they are uh, they are just talking about what the future is going to be. And yeah, we might have to look at some moves, et cetera, et cetera. That's trust the boring rumors. I don't like that. I also want a shirt of it. Yeah, you do. You need to have that. Now, uh, that is that is sort of what the situation I think is tomorrow or on Friday. And and we'll have an, a podcast right after that press conference finishes. So we'll have an, basically an instant reaction to it. I hope it's early. Yeah, me too. Do we, what time does it start? It's supposed to be 11 or 11.30, but they haven't nailed the time. They did say Friday morning. Okay, so noon. Yeah, because they always are like 45 minutes late to these things. Yes. Like um, but what they are doing right now, according to Elliot Friedman, is they're they're talking about right now they're having meetings about what's, what's going to happen. And that includes Sheldon Keefe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that I think CJ talked about, and I agree with him, on, on the CJ show, which was just ballistic yesterday. It was so oh, good. Oh, really good. Um, Julian, they started so hot with Julian getting suspended in ball hockey. Yeah, it was so great. I can't believe that happened, um, of all people. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, um, viable candidates for Sheldon Keefe. So you're, you're again, you're, you're, you get upset because the Leafs keep things the same. Mm -hmm. You do have to look at, who could replace this person? Anybody. And with Sheldon Keefe. Whoa. Sheldon Keefe. Okay, so your your options were Travis Green, who just signed, Gerard Gallant, Dean Evason, and Craig Berube. There is a thing that happens in the NHL, and it's head coaches get fired. Yep. Because just NHL players don't like having one head coach for too long. And Sheldon Keefe is the fourth or fifth most tenured head coach in the National Hockey League, which is egregious because of the lack of success that he's seen. A change for the sake of change often is very successful when it comes to head coaches. Isn't that funny? Yeah. It's just it's just how it works. It has always worked like that for decades now. Change for the sake of change works. And they should have gone in that direction a long time ago. Paul Maurice has a golden reputation right now. And to me, it's just proof that people don't have memories. Not when it comes to NHL head coaches. Dude, <laughs> this guy has been a head coach since he was a young man. He was I want to like say he was 28. Yeah, he was pretty young. Yeah, he was. There he was, was what he, I think when he was a Leafs head coach, there were players that were older than him. 
He was. <laughs> yeah, it might have been. They. He was. Um, I want to say he played pro or college or something, and he suffered an eye injury, so he couldn't play anymore. And he's been a head coach since the early mid nineties. The ninety five ninety six Hartford Whalers were his first head coaching job. Man, yeah. and like, dude, look at all the red for out of the playoffs. He had, round one. You did an article, by the way, back in the day for Leafs Nation, where it talked about no, how it was Paul, for Sportsnet. Oh, it was for Sportsnet. How Paul Maurice had never had good goaltending, though. Yeah, we we um, what did we do? We we arranged it so it was years where he had a good goalie who performed poorly, a bad goalie who performed poorly, a bad goalie who performed well, and a and a whatever. All those four quadrants, sure. and like. Basically, I looked at every team he's ever had, and I'm like, this guy just ne has never had a goalie. And what's hilarious is the past 10 years, all he's ever had is a goalie. <laughs> this dude went from Connor Hellebuck to the resurrection of Sergei Bobrovsky. Um, and like he's even had like some pretty good backups along the way. Uh, I guess we'll leave Pavel Electricity out of it. Although Pav Electricity was pretty good for a little he had a, while. He had a pretty good little run there. But, dude, there was a long time where his reputation was this guy coaches teams that lose. Yeah. And right now, he coaches teams that kick at. Look at the so, run. Look at the run. From his first gig in 95-96 up until today in 23-24, mm -hmm. there has only been one NHL season in his life where he was not an NHL head coach. Wow. Well, I guess the two, because the AHL, the Marlies head coach. So two seasons. He has the 05, Man, 06 season run. where he's an AHL head coach. And then the 12, 13 season where he's a KHL head coach. That's amazing. And then in there, you have the lockout. So here, wait a sec, Jesse. So there's a couple things I want to go through. Mm -hmm. um, the, the stretch that he's on. So he's had a couple deep runs, but the stretch he's on is lost in round three, lost in round one, lost in qualifying round, lost in round two, out of playoffs, then lost in finals. And then there's this year where he's up. Uh, no, he's not actually. He's down one nothing mm -hmm. in the second round. I know he lost in the first round this KHL year. Jesse, can you click on that team? Sure. Because this was the year I did highlights. This Metallurg Magnetogorst team kicked frigging ass wow yeah, it's, look at the, it's the malkin team right? yeah so well sergey mazakin was a former columbus blue jackets pick he stayed in the khl could have i in my opinion played in the nhl isn't he the highest scoring khl of all time pretty sure he owns like every khl scoring record malkin was on the team they ended up losing him Kuhlman was on the team. They ended up losing him because they all went back. To Ryan O'Reilly? The NHL. Yeah, dude. Justin Hodgman, Leaf legend, was really good. Sergey Gonchar, Matt Zuccarello, uh, Dmitry Kazyanov. I can't Cal remember. Cal O'Reilly even played in the league for a while. Yeah. Victor Antipin, I believe, played in the NHL. Dennis Platonov played in the NHL. Cal O'Reilly. Enver Leeson played in the NHL. Oleg Tevardoski? Dude. Oh. That wow, team, team ruled, and I think a big part of why uh, they lost in the first round is everyone left. <laughs> yeah, because wow. the NHL season kicked back like, into gear. Yeah, so look at all the lines under playoff stats. Those are dudes who didn't play because they went back to the NHL. Mm -hmm. Imagine losing an NHL lineup 10 years ago, losing Malkin, Kuhleman, Gonchar, Ryan O'Reilly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dude, they were great. Yeah, That was such a good team. Uh, the point was Paul Maurice has been in, in coaching forever and that he has a very short term memory when it comes to success, I think, was the point being made well, in people Sheldon Keith. Just, people have a very short term memory when they think about Paul Maurice because yes. he's always getting jobs and has does not have a long history, as you can see, of being a very uh, coach that can go on deep runs. You know, he's been in the finals twice in how many, how many years is that? 26 years, you know, so and he keeps getting hired because change for the sake of change is successful in the NHL. Well, and like you can ride a Stanley Cup for a while too, but like Randy Carlisle went from you this is one of the best coaches in the NHL after winning the Stanley Cup. And within a few years it's like no team should try to get this person. I would argue John Tortorella is in some way still riding his one Stanley Cup. Yeah, but even it's funny. Every time you lose faith in John Tortorella, he comes up with a couple really good seasons. Mm -hmm. 
I and then, think, and then you got to get rid of him because he overstays his welcome. I think John Tortorella, but he has a Stanley Cup, so there's a pedigree there. I think John Tortorella, and this is extremely disrespectful, but here it is: John Tortorella is one of the NHL coaches of all time. <laughs> Go look at his resume. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, after that cup, I don't think he's ever been back to the final, has he? No, he's won a like a bunch of playoff series. I think he's had a, you know at least one or two conference final appearances. Yeah, well, so like, you're making my point. No, no, I, I'm agreeing. Yeah, with you. yeah. <laughs> like, like he's he's. Yeah, he won the 0304 Stanley Cup with Tampa, mm -hmm. and then since then we got a bunch of out of the playoffs on his hockey DB coaching record, a bunch of losses in round one, and one trip to a conference finals. Okay, now go to John Cooper. Go to John Cooper. Like, I think. Holy look shit, at that! that oh my God! Look at that! No, 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 no! Oh, okay, click on that. that photo. Click on that I photo. I can zoom. That is oh. the whoa! Yeah. That is the most Bostonian man. <laughs> you know how many people he's told to fuck off? Mm. Oh, look at that. Look at that. You know what? I changed my mind. He's incredible. No, uh, I, 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 I No, no, yeah. Let, let's let's go on to John Cooper. <laughs> like, John Cooper. So many coaches are looked at as like the best thing ever. And I feel like only a handful of them actually are. Um uh I know Jesse's looking for it right now. Like how many truly go. great coaches are in the NHL right now? And also we've never even seen John Cooper not on the lightning. So who knows? Maybe he stinks. I don't think so because look at dude, look at the NAHL back-to-back -back championships goes to the USHL wins a championship goes to the AHL wins a championship goes to the NHL four finals appearances and two championships. This guy kicks ass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This get so yeah, I I feel like he's kind of disrespected in the whole coaching conversation. But we're we're getting miles away from the original point, which is which yeah. is which trying there to keep, are, I'm trying to bring us back to who <laughs> is who is the ultimate replacement. Now I've seen the Barube reports, and whenever there's a Leafs anything open, what people will do, and this is a good thing if you're trying to up your pat package. It, your your compensation package that is Phrasing. uh is you put your name in there and go oh the leafs might be considering because that forces other teams to go well shit i better get them and the sins might be considering yeah well i mean okay so the barube thing came down to money according to Fridge is which is, sends fans took great i don't know that travis green is that bad like sends fans acted like he's like Worse than DJ Smith. I'm like, you guys just watch five years of DJ Smith. Like, I are you I, kidding? I, I and don't then think Josh Martin, who was terrible. I don't think Sens fans were as mad about Travis Green. I don't think they were over the moon about it, but I don't think they were as mad about Travis Green as they were about hearing that it came down to money again. Mm -hmm. Like, that is if I'm Michael Anlauer, I do whatever I can to nip that in the bud. Um, because the whole reason for optimism with you is a, you weren't the last guy, and B, you're actually going to spend on this team. Yeah, and the follow-up to that was that it wasn't entirely about money. It was Barube. They felt in some of the interviews with him that the Ottawa Senators' job wasn't his number one job, and is, they didn't want somebody who was like, oh, yeah, I'll just take this job if it's there. Which so is why you got to nip from. that in the bud, because yeah. that is not the message that's out there. Right, well, the message is whatever the the fans want to, like all the fans who want to dump on Sens, uh, fans, Sens fans and what the rumor is salacious that's out there. They're going to run with the money one. But if you... If you listen to some more stuff and you do the research, and fans aren't obligated to do that, yeah, well, we, that's, that's where we, we started about. the show. That's, that's the whole. Point. That's the 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 money quote. That's that's the money quote. You know, you see the headline. They couldn't afford him, and you run with that. But that's not the whole story. Also, I want to throw this at you. Um, Michael Ann Lauer said in his opening press conference, if we go back to it, he said, "Yes, I'm going to spend money, but this business has to operate as a business." Meaning like, I'm not going to set, I'm not the Winnipeg Jets. I'm not going to set $30 million or $25 million on fire every year. Why? It's going great. Well, I mean, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think that, I think that what he's saying is there's a budget for things mm -hmm. and the budget is what the budget is. And I bet to get Travis Green to come down a little bit in price on the AAV, I bet they gave him the fourth year. Four years for a head coach right off the bat. Yeah, I thought that was, I was really surprised. interesting. You get two to three normally. I was surprised. And I think that's because they wanted to bring the cost down. Ottawa has to do 
a lot of rebuilding within Ottawa and within the Canadian corporate community that could offer sponsorship dollars for this team. I, I think you need to understand on the business side of things that the Melnick era burnt a lot of bridges. There was a ton of instability. There were executives that were here and gone regularly. There was one from Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment who went in. And Tom was, Anselmi. Tom Anselmi. He was there for like a year and then boom, gone. And it's, it's you know, and then it's all, you know, pure, pure McGuire's in there one day. And then there's the, like, it's just there was, out of nowhere, out of nowhere. There's so much stuff that happened with the senators that they're probably on a trajectory. They have to be looking at this in a three to five year thing on the money side of we can't maximize profits. People, clients are just going to come back because they got a new owner. Oh, no, no. You have to woo them back. Mm -hmm. You have to prove to them that you're legit because a new owner in, in itself, even though they're not the Eugene Melnick owner, they are unstable in inherently because you don't know this person. They're an, an unknown quantity. And yes, this guy owned 10% of the Canadians. I know, but is he the was he the key principal owner? No. So he needs to prove himself mm -hmm. within that community it's and different. put together an org. It's a way different. Put together an organization that is stable, that is well run, that services clients properly, that treats fans well, that has a good brand within the community. And unfortunately, spending wildly on a head coach just may not be in the budget. And I don't know what wildly for the senators is. Four years for Travis Green to me says uh, that he wanted X amount of dollars. I want $20 million. Okay, well, we can't give you that in three, but we can give you that in four. So it, the other thing is, I, I forgot, by the way, Jay Woodcroft is also available. So Barube, I think Woodcroft, everyone has Everson and um, Gallant. I, I mean, it, it all comes down to what the Leafs think could be an upgrade. And, you know, in a year's time, is John Cooper available? God, that'd be nice. You know, like that, it might be. And remember, they just signed Keith to this two-year extension. <laughs> well, <laughs> and by the way, uh, small aside, uh, I really like Jay Woodcroft. I think the world of him. But uh, Chris Knobloch maybe should have been nominated for the Jack Adams. Yeah. He won. Mm -hmm. I don't know the exact number. I don't, I don't know how he wasn't. He actually. went like 45 and 15. <laughs> like it was pretty hard. Well, you should take that up with the NHL broadcasters. Oh, the broadcasters right. Association because uh, we found out that the, it is indeed the play-by-play -play and color guys who vote on the Jack Adams Award. Bunch of silly which billies. Is, I think weird. Yeah, because maybe uh, it should be done by the writers who write who vote on everything else. Big, uh, big <laughs> Jay Woodcroft guys. Mm. Um, I want to throw this not, at you. Oh, not I big guess. Jay Wood. Yeah. No, no, they they would be big Jay Woodcroft guys because they don't. Because it's still Jay's team. They don't respect Knobloch, right? <laughs> hey, has the internet ever told you to get outside and touch grass? Yep. <laughs> wow. It's crazy. Now Handful. that the Leafs are out, you can. And listen, if your hockey team is in or they're out, the weather's getting better. And that means you need some shady rays to cover those corneas. Yeah, cover those corneas. That's right. Jesse, anything to add? No, yeah. Steve's just really good at just yelling what you just said. Yeah, yeah really good at yelling what you just said. <laughs> 300,000 people have rated these five stars. How many stars? people? Five stars! How many people? <laughs> I think you said 100,000. 300,000. 300,000. Not even good at your job, uh, yeah. Steve. Now, you repeat what he says, except louder. <laughs> Listen, if you don't get a pair of Shady Rays, oh. we're going to have a friggin' problem. I don't think Adam said yeah, that. I don't think the... <laughs> I don't know if they want us to. I don't think you threaten people. Bully and cajole people yeah, into no. getting Shady Rays because you should want to get Shady Rays, especially for this crazy deal. What? ShadyRays.com. Use the promo code SDP. 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. What's a, the deal, Steve? It's not a threat. It's a promise. What's the deal? I forget. I was being menacing. <laughs> it is It is 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses at ShadyRays.com. Use the code SDP. That's how you get the uh, One more time. Steve, what's the, what's the deal? 50% off... Two pairs or more. That's of right. Polarized sunglasses. Code. You cut me off. What's the there? code? What's the code? code? Dangle. No. no. <laughs> it's SDP. It's SDP. See how much he listens to me. See how much? Anyway, check it out. ShadyRays.com. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is obviously the, the on-demand therapy service where if you need it now, you can get it now. And that's the thing. A lot of times when people decide to go to therapy, they could have used it months ago. And then it takes you sometimes months to get hooked up with a therapist. And then what if that that you know that therapist doesn't work? And I've had to switch therapists before. It's tough. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. 
That's right. And what if it could be <laughs> what if it could be 48 hours to grow that therapy tree? All right, Gandhi. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that was a Gandhi quote. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> Listen, better help. I'm gonna look it up. Better help. If you want uh great therapy, if you want to be able to choose the methodology in which you are uh you know, which you get treatment, which you talk to people, which you kind of get these things off your chest. Quotes uh, too long. <laughs> Is that what it is? I want to see That's you. great. No, All right. Well, listen, just go to this. Get it off your chest with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash SDP. Get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash SDP. 10% off your first month. Who said it, Jesse? Steve Dangle. Um, I want to say this. Uh, uh, Austin Matthews, nominee for the Lady Bing, nominee for the Selkie, and just announced nominee for the Ted Lindsay as well. Mm-hmm. What? So that's very interesting. Nominated for the Ted Lindsay, not nominated for the heart. So the heart is MVP, mm-hmm. but that's most valuable player to their team. Yes. In tre- you know, but the Ted Lindsay, Jesse, maybe you should look up the exact wording, but it's basically best player as voted by the players. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It was the Lester B. Pearson. It was the Lester that. B. Pearson. Now yeah. it's the Ted Lindsay. So you can rename trophies. Sure you can. Um, but it didn't make sense to have a Canadian prime minister from the fifties as the, as the person no, who, on the trophy. That's why it was odd. That's why we don't rename the other trophies. The other trophies, you should remain the same. Who is heart? I don't know. Who is that? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. We can look at that. I don't heart know. Memorial. Who the, the heart Ted, Memorial. The Ted Lindsay, if you want the exact definition from NHL, from the NHL first awarded in 1970, 71, as the Lester B. Pearson Award, the Ted Lindsay Award is presented annually to the most outstanding player as voted by fellow members of the NHLPA. Hmm. There you go. Uh, the Hart Memorial Trophy is named in honor of Canadian Dr. David Hart. Mm-hmm. Dr. Hart, who donated the original trophy to the NHL, was the father of Cecil Hart, a former coach and general manager with the Canadians. The trophy was first awarded in 23-24. And so, he donated wow. his heart as well. Yes. Yes, he did. So this is the hundredth yeah. year, most of the valuable heart for his body. Yes, yes. yes. Wait, this is the hundredth year of the heart trophy. Uh, yeah, twenty three, twenty four. Yeah, wow. Holy yeah. Nobody shit. has said that. I think no. That's wow. Well, <laughs> Steve Dangle breaking news. <laughs> Apparently, Damn, dude. Yeah. Or would this be the hundred and first technically? Uh, the wow. Hundred first awarded was twenty four. Yeah. So okay. And so I understand why you don't change that because it's been a hundred years of that. Sure. Now, okay. This is important. Kucherov, McDavid. Uh, McKinnon. Mm-hmm. Those are the three Hart nominees. Who are the Ted Lindsay nominees if Austin Matthews is replacing one of them? Kucherov and McKinnon. So McDavid is... <laughs> McDavid's oh. nominated for the Hart. He's not nominated for the Ted Lindsay, yes. So the players are like, this guy's not one of the top three. Mm-mm. They voted Austin McDavid. Matthews instead, yeah. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, listen. Matthews is one of the top three defensive forwards in the league based on the Selkie right he's nominated for it mm-hmm. and he scored 69 goals for him to not be nominated for the hardest tough like i understand it but damn that's that's a tough who, class who overthought it the writers or the players 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 how do you not have mcdavid in there he should be in there every year over matthews well they don't over, agree. no over kucherov they don't agree all the time <laughs> that's i think i bad. Okay. dude <laughs> that's dude bad. dude Dude, I'm telling you, You're an McKinnon, McDavid, that Matthews. That's what I would go with. Oh, what? That's bad. <laughs> for the for the Lindsay or for the Hart? For both. There's Why is no, that bad? Because there's no reason that uh, McDavid should be in there over Kucherov when they have identical stats, except Kucherov's are better. I think I think it's better that McDavid came from nothing and caught Kucherov. I think that says something. I honestly like. I, I really look at where Kucherov was. McDavid had what a 25 point. He was down what 25 30 points. He was he was very far And he back. caught him? Yeah. Come on. What are we are we going to erase that? I he he surprised. also didn't catch him because Kudrov won the Art He Ross. caught him for a second and then and Kudrov then Kudrov won the, the Art Ross trophy. He yeah, his last game was against the Leafs. He didn't catch count. him. Yeah, that doesn't count. Doesn't count doesn't against count. the Leafs. I, I, if you look at what Kucherov did as the solo point getter on Tampa Bay, it's the reason the trophy exists. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Nah. So why would he be removed when he's pr- might honestly win the thing? Over oh, he'll probably McKinnon. will. He probably will. Consider, so then, what's the? Why nah. would you remove him from the top three? Uh, because it's the Ted Lindsay Award. It's not MVP to your team. It's the best players. 
And I'm I talking th- about the best player. I think he was the as best. voted on by the player. I think he was the best player. I don't. I don't. Th- I don't agree. I think McKinnon's a better player. I think McDavid's a better player. I think Matthews had a. I, I think Matthews' accomplishments this year had he hit seventy goals. Let's be honest. If Matthews and I'm going to be a Toronto homer for a second, well, I'll admit this. No, if he I know hit where you're 70, going. Is Matthews in the one of the top three in the heart? He might be. He might be because we're obsessed with round numbers in this sport. Yep. In no, all sports, he, my my question: I don't understand why you're so you're putting Matthews over Kucherov. I, I personally, I think that in the Ted Lindsay conversation, we're talking about the best players: McKinnon, McDavid, and I'd say based on his season, Matthews. Yes, yes, and I stand behind that. I'm not talking about MVP to their team, yeah. which is a weird designation. Yeah, because I, in every other sport, it's just MVP. Not yeah. MVP to their team. Mm-hmm. I get why Kucherov is going to win that award. He is the Tampa Bay Lightning. I get that. Mm-hmm. Uh, McKinnon. Yeah, where are the Avalanche be without McKinnon? Not great. Not great. Sure. Not great, Bob. Yeah. Uh, the Oilers, I think, could survive. They're deep enough now that I think they'd survive a, a 20 game. You don't think, you don't think the 100 assists is more impressive than the 69 goals? I don't. Oh, okay. I honestly don't. And I know it's been done less. I know. Okay. I know because one is I know far more rare than the other. I think that I think goals are worth double. Wait, this. no, I think you're all missing the number one argument against Kucherov. Fuck him. <laughs> yeah, but also fuck him. Fuck him. <laughs> no, because I don't think the conversation we're having is is Kucherov over McDavid. Because I think uh, that should be the three. It's you're removing Kucherov to put in Matthew. What about Kucherov was rude at the All Star game? Yeah. It's a good point. Jesse, it's he a, gave up. Yeah, yeah. It's a joke. Oh, <laughs> I guess he's upset he's, about this. Jesse, uh, he's huge. Really, he's really upset. upset. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to find your reasoning. It's, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? He almost had 70 goals. He had 69 goals. Yeah. Uh, McDavid came back and, and squashed a 25-point lead midway through the season that Kucherov had. And then you've got Nathan McKinnon, who at some point is going to get his Revenant trophy. I don't think right. I, even okay. If I'll listen to the argument that you'd put Kucherov in over McKinnon, I'll listen to that. <laughs> but I will not. I will not take this Austin Matthews slander. That he's a heart nominee if he gets seventy. I know he didn't, but I think it's crap that he got sixty. No, we're not talking about the heart show. We're talking about the Ted. Lindsay. Okay, and the Ted Lindsay is the best player, and he's he's nominated for the Ted Lindsay and McDavid's. Yes, and isn't isn't Sasha Barkov normally nominated for this too? Isn't this just like the the Sasha Barkov trophy where it's like all the players think he's super great and he's underrated. Isn't that the know. thing? Yes. Am I right on that? Steve? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you Our, would remove. So what's your top three in the voting? If you'd remove McKinnon. So McKinnon comes. In I think third. McDavid's one. I think McKinnon's two. I think Matthew's three. You just said you would m- re- remove McKinnon. I'll listen to it before Matthews. I, I we're talking about best players. Yeah. 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 But I think you have to look at, what the season was. Well, we I got a I great Drew. He just quit. Yeah. Uh, he'll live. <laughs> he'll live. He takes enough shots at the Leafs. I'm sure he can survive this. Drew? When? <laughs> Name one. I think when you ju- when we look back on this season, like if you went five years in the future and you look back on the season, you'd say the two most outstanding players of the season were McKinnon and Kucherov. I don't. So, I think that's McDavid erasure. I really do. I think that's Matthews erasure. I think that's a joke. I think Matthews... Had, a, had one of the craziest goal-scoring seasons we've had in 30 years. Mm-hmm. We have McDavid. Here's the thing. McDavid didn't win the Art Ross. Mm-hmm. But if if Knobloch is the coach from game one, and they're not losing 8 nothing and trying a defensive scheme that doesn't work for the first 20 games, McDavid wins the Art Ross hands down all day. But he didn't. Yeah, but you know the answer to that. Over the course, his points per game after Knobloch but, but takes over. Unfortunately, we don't w- live in the world well, that's where hypotheticals. My, uh, that, that's still my reasoning. How... Kucherov has the best coach in the league. He has the best coach in the league. Josh John Cooper, for my money, is the best coach in the league. They didn't Which have takes that off so like instability. Points. That that yeah. They didn't that have should, the instability. The Oilers did. Are we are we just going to ignore the facts? That should remove votes from him. Because okay, you're right. You're right. No, you know what? Vote. Let's not put McDavid in the Ted Lindsay. Are we out of our mind? He's not currently. That's like, that's what I'm like. This is crazy. He's the best player on on planet Earth. But that's not what it's. The, who had the most outstanding season this year? He came. He and caused the guys, turnaround. Two the guys. Oilers were never going to make the playoffs if they kept going. What would they have been? Where were where were the McDavid Oilers in November? 
when past the Thanksgiving line where, you know, the American Thanksgiving line where it's like, if you're not in the playoffs, you got a low chance of making it. I just, I and, just, and all of a sudden they turn it around and they're challenging for the division. They're in the second round of the playoffs. What are we talking about? I just wanted to tweet a, a sincere thanks to whoever decided to announce this mid show. Oh, they, my God. it wasn't announced mid show. It wasn't? No, no, no. When was it announced? This like, morning. This morning? Yeah. It was? Yeah. 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 Either way, I'm supposed to get those emails. What the? F- yeah. yeah. Well, he did. I don't know. I think when you look at the season as a whole, I think most hockey fans would agree, and the players would agree that the two most outstanding seasons are McKinnon and Kucherov. I think and most then, hockey fans don't have a long memory. And, and then you look back, and then you say, "Okay, we can have the arguments about McDavid and Matthews," which I think is why they swap places on the Ted Lindsay and the Hart Trophy, and why they're ones in one and ones not in the other. But there's two that are above the rung of the rest of the guys. I think this is Nylander Marner erasure. Oilers were seven seven and zero oh in November. Mm-hmm. In October, mm-hmm. they were. Two five and one. Don't you think we should save this for June, fellas? I, I'm. You're right. I'm sorry. All right. I'm All right. just saying. Go ahead. In December Go ahead. they were. In December they were nine three and zero, oh. and now that directly correlates to their coach being changed. Mm-hmm. If they had a similar record at you know December, January, February, in November, October, uh, this isn't even a question. McDavid is Hart Trophy winner, hands down. It's funny how we don't exist in the world of hypotheticals and you just have to look at the season as a whole. How do you not look at a comeback and and, and say that that's amazing? You have to say who has the most outstanding season overall and Kucherov's, the points he put up as the lone point getter on the Tampa Bay Lightning was more impressive than what McDavid did in the months that you're rating his new coach over when he got his previous coach. I don't understand. Well, okay, here's what... <laughs> then let's throw this at you. I don't okay? understand. His slow, his slow start means that his the rest of his season was more Okay, impressive. well, how about this? Uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning finished with 93 points. The Oilers finished with 99. Mm-hmm. The Oilers had a better year than Tampa despite that shitty start. Yeah, and I think it, that lends itself more to the fact that McDavid is able to do things that Kucherov cannot do. Uh, like it's but it's an individual. It's about the individual performance. The one we're talking about, Ted Lindsay. Do you guys still need me? You can weigh in too. Yeah. Like you're sitting here. You, you don't. don't you, you can like, talk. No. Up, you, you don't have an opinion on the Hart Trophy or well, Ted I'm, Lindsay. I thought we were having a fun discussion about the hockey season. Oh that yeah, you it's also real. Watched and oh yeah, you can, it's real fun. I'm, I don't know. I'm having a good, I, don't, I don't know. I thought, just having a you're chat. not allowed to have. Listen, you we're can allowed also to have weigh in, Steve. I don't know why you're. The, no, like, yeah. What are you doing? You guys are yelling too loud for me. Listen, we're having a passionate discussion. It doesn't mean it's personal. Where what are what are your thoughts? Okay, my thoughts are <laughs> Why don't you weigh in? My thoughts are because I'm having too much fun listening. Okay, what are your uh, thoughts on the Ted Lindsay and Hartro? Yeah, take a fucking stance. My thoughts wimp. are it is god damn. <laughs> my thoughts are um it's insane to leave a Selkie nominee who scored 69 goals off the heart ballot. Yes. And yet you ask me to take one of those three men off, and I can't do it. Mm-hmm. The so the, you so you leave Austin Matthews off, <laughs> and what about the Ted Lindsay? The guy. Well, it's funny, which is what we're really discussing. Yeah, Steve, you can't do the thing where you just make the arguments for all four guys. Yeah, no, you have to make, no, make, make, make a stand. I didn't do I'm that. Asking you, I'm asking you just to submit your voting. What is it? I didn't do that. No, the uh, I am surprised <laughs> Matthews was nominated for the Lindsay. Mm-hmm. Um, because it goes against the heart voting, which I think is the correct voting for as good as I think Matthews is the guy. So you would expect the Lindsay and the heart to be the same is what I'm saying. Well, no, because I mean, if we're going by the three best, yes. Okay. Um, the Lindsay and heart often don't align. I'm trying to remember, uh, the most recent time a heart winner did not also win the Lindsay, um, Connor McDavid. uh, was it Connor McDavid? Because off the top of my head, I remember Corey Perry won the heart and one of the Sedins got the Ted Lindsay. No, 17 18, Taylor Hall won the heart trophy. Connor McDavid won which the was, Ted, Ted Lindsay. And, and McDavid which is outrageous. Still outrageous. Won it as, a, uh, as someone who wasn't even nominated for the heart, which I don't know if that's ever happened. Um, that was truly wild and insane. And the only reason he didn't win the heart that year is because he didn't make the playoffs. Dude, he wasn't nominated for that. I know. It's outrageous. He wasn't even He's the nominated. best player by far in the NHL that year. Um, 
I like I like that there's a little bit of difference between the heart and the Lindsay. I think that's the point. It should be. Mm-hmm. I I would say so. I think they got the list right with Kucherov, McDavid, um, McKinnon. If I were to take a player off of that, it feels so stupid to say Kucherov. And yet, that's probably the guy I go with because of... Now, this is the other thing that I'm worried about saying because I don't know how this aligns. But did Kucherov not have the most power play points out of all those players? I don't know off the top of my head. Like I know the Lightning were um, Kucherov merchants. I just mm-hmm. I wonder if he was a, a like if he put up a lot of does that on the power that play? takes away from his what he did the, during the season. If you well score, they don't I, count Jesse. So so Jesse this <laughs> is a weird interesting. Argument. Jesse this is interesting <laughs> because you can't score points on the power play. By the way, by the, way the, the the power point the power play point leaders in the NHL were as follows: Kucherov fifty three, McKinnon forty eight. Mm. Okay, Panarin forty four, McDavid forty four. Yeah, right, I don't. So, I, why would you even go there? So it's no, no, less no. impressive when somebody scores. On Take the power them both play. off. Fuck them. So <laughs> here's the thing: it's harder to score at five on five, but you could reverse that and be like, yeah, well, it's easier to score on the power play, and Matthews did that less. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, he failed to do the easier thing, and as we saw in the playoffs. It's actually pretty helpful when you score on the power play. I think that's a skill that Kucherov's allowed to have. And sure. It, it lends to his game. Yeah. So uh, I, the season Austin Matthews had was completely dominant. My three would still be the three that they... For had. the Lindsay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's but, not even like Adam has Kucherov two or three. You got him four. Yeah. And what? so what's your official voting for Ted Lindsay? I would say, uh, uh, you know what? Just for fun, McKinnon. Has he won the Lindsay before? I know he's never won the Hart. I don't know. Which no, and he it feels no, wrong. He has no Lindsay. He's no Lindsay. So let's say no. McKinnon. Because again, Revenant McKinnon. Okay. Let's say he wins the Hart and the Lindsay this year. Mm-hmm. All right. Which would be second, like, I get that. Second, McDavid. Third, Matthews. Fourth, Kucherov. Who's fifth? That's a good question. It's a ballot. You got to submit five. Uh, that's a really good question. Panarin. Do you put, well, it's, it should be Panarin, but if do you put in it like a, do you put in like a, uh, hey, you, you did real great for being the age that you are to Sidney Crosby and carrying that team? I think ah. Hellebuck can be in that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Quinn Hughes. Man, he's good. No, nah, Quinn Hughes. I think he's a little off of the heart trophy. He's garbage in front of the net. I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. Um, Probably top 10. Leon, yes. Uh, yes. We don't want to erase Leon Dreisaitl from this list. I'll give you the top 10 in scoring. How's that? Kucherov, McKinnon, McDavid, Panarin, Pasternak, Matthews, Dreisaitl, Rantanen, who often gets forgotten, JT mm-hmm. Miller and William Nylander. And that's not everything. Obviously, there's defense yes. that matters in all of this. There's goaltenders that can be a part of this. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I remember we had this conversation before the season ended. And the five were the three dudes who scored a billion points in Kucherov, McKinnon, McDavid, then Matthews and Crosby. Like, I don't care what order you put your heart ballot in, but I remember the conversation being it has to be one of those five. So Mm -hmm. then what's interesting about this is a guy who is one of the most gentlemanly players in the league, doesn't get penalized a lot, is the Lady Bing. He's also nominated as best defensive forward in the league, but also leads the league in goal, t- goal scored, not nominated for most valuable to his team. It's hard to do. Who's that? Matthews. Matthews. Oh, oh, no, it's really hard to do. And he had 20 penalty minutes. And part of that and he won't win the Lady Bing with 20 penalty minutes. Half of those penalty minutes came from a game misconduct that he got while he was cleaning up equipment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think the voters recognize that. Yeah, no, you know, they like, obviously they, like if, if you know that they know that we got some. Also, I have to wonder that the, the Lindsay's voted on by the players, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I don't know who nominates NHLPA, them, but, yeah. Yeah. Do you as a player? I know no, the you heart, can vote on everybody. I know the heart is prestigious. Uh, it's 100 years of the heart mm-hmm. is. Do you as a player feel a better sense of satisfaction knowing that your fellow players voted you versus whoever votes on the heart, which is a, writers? Do you have a contract bonus for if you win the heart? Yeah, a lot of them do. Actually. Well, yeah. there's your answer. Yeah, Stephen, you said you don't okay. know who nominates them. The nominations are just from the voting. Yeah, it's like, like these the are the voting. top three. Oh, yeah, that's how you get the nominees. They, so they all voted on it, and these are the top three. Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I think I think that um, I like a spicy debate. By Seventeen, way. eighteen. Uh, Connor McDavid, Ted Lindsay means a lot to him. It should because you watch, you see what happened that season. Taylor Hall was the heart, but you come in fourth or fifth with the with the writers. I feel like having your peers recognize you in that instance. You say that okay. The writers missed something that year. There's no reason I should have been fourth or fifth in voting. I, I got to look it up. That he year, finished, the, but... heart, the heart was the look at you go award. It yeah. was Taylor Hall he finished, shocking him. Right? He finished in fifth in heart voting that season. That, and you, he wasn't even four. Wow. And you win the Ted Lindsay amongst your peers. I feel like McDavid gets some solace in the fact that he's like, yeah, the writers probably got that wrong. He was fifth. And the, and the and argument he, at wow. the time. Argument at the time was, well, they didn't make the playoffs, so you can't give it to them. That had and I Andy, think Andy, Andy, Andy was twenty one years old. There's some bias in that where it's the yeah. young kid oh, he hasn't earned it. League. Yeah, there's some like old man hockey man to that where you don't want to vote for the twenty one year old kid, even though they did vote for the twenty two year old and Nathan McKinnon. I'm pretty sure he who, already had a heart to his name though before that. Yeah, the year before. Yeah, it would have been back to back. Um, unbelievable. I think if the true person, I think that got robbed in that heart trophy discussion. If we look back is Nathan McKinnon. Okay. I think that was his heart trophy year. And if he's missing one on his resume, it should have been that Taylor Hall, uh, heart trophy. And it would have made more sense for the history of the game to have McKinnon win that year. I think McKinnon's winning this year. Isn't there, I really do. isn't there, he needs one. Didn't like Kobe Bryant and LeBron James win like less than five MVPs or whatever. Like during their careers, I feel like that's that might be how we end up looking. Back well, you don't table. often see where we players we look, winning MVPs back to back every year because people there's like a thing, especially with with um and and we're guilty of this in the media of like okay maybe that's the obvious choice, but what about if I'm smarter than everybody? Right, and <laughs> you know what I mean. And oh, listen, yeah. I say that as a guy who just had a huge debate with Jesse over the Ted Lindsay, but like. There is a little bit of like hipster sort of vibes where it's like, oh, I can't vote for that guy. I voted for him last year. Oh, yeah, I, was, I was on the Taylor Hall train. That I year. was definitely not. And looking yeah. back, I'm like, okay, that was a bit silly. <laughs> they, everybody overthought it. It's ridiculous. I think it should have been McKinnon that year. And yeah, the voter fatigue exists across pro sports. Um, I think you look at the NBA MVP uh, last year, Nikola Jokic should have had his third straight MVP, I think it would have been, and they gave it to Joel Embiid. I, and I think you look guy. back at the history and you'd say, yeah, you know, probably should have been Jokic's again, and he's probably going to win it again this year. But um, there is some weird hipster vibe about that. And just to correct you there, uh, Kobe has four MVPs. LeBron has four as well, I think. Right. Ooh. Yeah. No, How many did MJ get? It's less than you think. Like, oh, you thought it'd be like more than that? Well, you like the way they're <laughs> regarded in sure. NBA history. No, that, I think that those numbers are about right. You look yeah. at those individual seasons, you see, yeah, probably four times they were the best player. It's hard to win MVP. Mm -hmm. It is. It's, it's oh, yeah. more about... Fun to have debates. Yeah. It's more about year in and year out and year in and year out. That's that's the argument that I always say about Henrik Lundqvist. I don't know how many Vesnas he won. I want to say it was like two. Um, but every year, the He's... conversation would come up and there he is. Yeah, top two, top three goaltender every year, right? Every year. It's yeah. it's hard to be top five, top ten every single year. Oh, yeah. And these guys regularly are. Like, last year, if you were to say who were the best players in the league, maybe Matthews is off that a little bit because he only had 40 goals and wasn't as good. But, like, it's usually the same customers. It's McKinnon, McDavid, Kucherov's in there. Uh, if you want to include defense, it's like Kale McCarr. And, yep. you know, it, it, there are this, it's the same guys, the same names coming up, which is the current superstars. We haven't, we'll have these guys for a while and then there will be a changing of the guard like there was five, six years ago. Could you guys tell me who the top three in Hart Trophy voting were from last season? Plus, I couldn't. Even I don't even know who won. won. Uh, uh, probably McDavid. No. Matthews won. Oh, yeah. McDavid got 60. Matthews won the year before. Five goals? Yeah. So it's got to be McDavid. Let's say McKinnon and Kucherov. Pasternak? Oh. Yeah. You Pasta get also had over 60. I'm going to say McDavid, Pasta, McCarr. I don't know. Last season was the season that Connor McDavid had the unanimous MVP except for one vote. Oh! Who was the one? Do we know? He had 195 votes and second place, you nailed it, David Pasternak. Let's had, go. Had one vote. Who? Do you remember? We made a big deal about I, the, I, the, I, the writer. I, I do now. Because all I, their ballots are out. 
when and they come out. Wasn't it not a Boston writer? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Do we need? We don't need a name. Name. Yeah. We litigate that whole thing. If you want to go back a year from now or year, the last June when the awards were, we we yelled about it. That it was, was tough. it was ridiculous. He should have had a unanimous MVP, and he didn't last season. And the third nominee was Matthew Kachuk. Oh, oh. a good pick, mm-hmm. man. The Florida Panthers. First off, you know people forget Damn. how Florida went into the playoffs last year, which was on the back of Matthew Kachuk. So he was nominated for that before the playoffs even began. <laughs> Yeah, he had a great year. Man, the Florida Panthers, like mind blowing how they got into the playoffs and won last year and went all the way to the Stanley Cup final. But people forget that last year to this year, they have a 10 win improvement. 20 points. That's enormous. Yeah. no. And then the the year before, like a couple years before that, they won the President's Trophy. The year before. The year before. Uh, Wasn't it? Whatever Brunette's year was. It was Quinville. Recently. I think it was 22. Yeah. They won the president's trophy, then traded uh, the dude with the best left wing season ever in Jonathan Huberdeau and uh, became a better playoff team. And um, if, if you don't remember, the the writer gave McDavid the fifth place vote. OK, does that jog your memory again? That was. That was, no, that's I don't just remember, that. Don't remember that. That's just being mean. He gave him the fifth. Just being he gave mean. Pasta the first, and he gave McDavid the fifth place vote last year. By the way, had <laughs> that been a Toronto writer, Edmonton would have invaded Toronto. Yeah. There would have been a war. It was the like, Pittsburgh writer. It was the Pittsburgh writer. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That's <laughs> that's miserable. outrageous. That's the dumbest friggin' thing I think I've ever yeah. heard. Yeah. I, I understood the argument. Like they made a compelling argument to put pasta one. I was like, okay, I get it. Greatest regular season team of all time, the Boston was last year. Pasta is the leader in that. Maybe you can make that argument, even though McDavid should have won it. But to give McDavid a fifth place vote, yeah, we no. know who, you're doing nonsense. Who was the second place no vote way. for him? Can I ask? Uh, his ballot? I don't have it. You don't have it? Okay. No, no. I just want to know, like, if it's not McDavid, who? For the <laughs> I want to know three. who was third. <laughs> yeah. Who I want to know who was fourth. fourth. Yeah. Who like, was two, three, four? <laughs> the further down you get, the more interesting it gets. <laughs> yeah. Call them what you want. Knee knockers, golden nuggets, thigh slappers, but our friends at Manscaped refer to them as the boys. Knee knockers? No, that's what? a new one. Well, I don't know if it is, because that's how apparently people call it that. Thigh people are saying slappers? Thigh, thigh slappers. Listen, golden nuggets. Not every man Why has children. Stick to balls. But every man is respons- Every man is responsible for the two boys below their waist. And when the guys have more hair than they need, you should trust Manscaped for all your grooming needs. And all listen, right. they do more than just the balls. They do the face too. Yeah. Not even with the same uh, piece either. It's not like you're going to go. Do you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, that's a that's very, kind of key. That is something to emphasize. We're talking about different products yes. when we talk about the face, when we talk about the balls. Yeah. That's right. So, yeah. Shave your chin flappers. <laughs> there is the Lawnmower 5.0 oh. Ultra, which is available to you, right? Mm. And then uh, and it uses skin safe technology. So, you know, protects against nicks and poles and unfun things like that it's also waterproof which is important but jesse you use manscape products on your face yeah i use the beard one because it has a little dial it's called the beard hedger is the actual name of the product that's the one i use i like the little dial where you can set the exact length you want and it's consistent you know it's just every time you want the 5.5 or you want the 3.5 you just set it every time and you shave away and it's it's never like let me down it's been perfect there you go Again, not the same device, but yes. all available. There's a different one for your balls. <laughs> Manscaped. Uh, 20% off and free shipping with the code DANGLE at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code DANGLE. Manscaped.com for the best your boys have ever looked and your face too. Trust Manscaped. Now, uh, we don't have to do that. Go listen to those episodes. Just like, Steve, uh, just like uh, Steve's Hart and Ted Lindsay Awards, mm. the NHL draft lottery stayed the same. Nothing about the lottery. It 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 ended how it began, which I is forgot that even happened until you brought. It yeah. Up. So I was doing the stream for it, and it was lots of fun. But it was like, and they moved through it very quickly. They but, did. But how the teams finished? St. Louis all the way down to San Jose, sixteen to one. Everything stayed the same. Not a single team moved. That's the first time since 2010. This doesn't happen a lot. And it is going to happen from time to time. 14 years. And I'll give the NHL a ton of credit here because you used to get, 
if you finished last, your chances at first overall pick were 25%. Then they were 20%. It used to be 100. Now, now they're, yeah, <laughs> now they're 18.5%. So there's lots of opportunities for move, for movement. They are done by an outside third-party source. So, you know, oh, it, it, it happens. John Bougie spoiled it. But there's two there's two storylines here. Obviously, a lot has been made of the Macklin Celebrini. His father is, you know, high up at sports science at the, I think, VP of sports of player golden state Warriors, yeah golden state Warriors. he's, he's a yeah. high up there so that's cool that he gets to be in the same area number two and this is the one that i'm surprised nobody's talking about is you know there was a whole zoom call with all the general managers and i you know i think there were a lot of general managers who would never have expected to be there when the season started i'm thinking tom fitzgerald i'm thinking doug armstrong i'm thinking kyle dubas i'm thinking you know a few of the other names where these teams really disappointed but when pittsburgh's pick came up i believe at number 14 or number 12 and they and my and that pick immediately goes to the san jose sharks through the eric carlson trade you realize the magnitude of what that kind of trade can be for an organization Mm -hmm. my career let me remind you the only parts of this deal that matter are eric carlson salary tension and the pick yeah okay eric carlson goes Mike Greer is like, fine, we'll pick up $1.2 million of his salary. For quite a while. For quite a while. But fine. We'll handle that. Leafs did it with Kessel. It happens. Sure. Um, We're going to get the pick back, and it's going to be top 10 protected, which we're making, if you're Mike Greer, you're making a bet that you probably get that pick within a year, and he's right. But what's crazy about it is the fact that it's about as close as you can get to 11th without being 11th. And and I and I think I mean I'm sure Dubas was like crossing his fingers, right? But that trade could like these guys forget, you know what, you know Chicago has to do. They got to surround Bedard with like two or three more superstars, right? Mm-hmm. You got to do that. This is a disaster for the Penguins. I am outstanding at your ability to make this about Kyle Dubas. I think it's the most fascinating part of the lottery. <laughs> Nothing happened. I I'll I'm blown away. I'm going to say this is actually wow uh, good. You think it's good? Yeah. Tell I me mean, why it's a good thing. Uh, because this... Okay, okay, next year. Penguins getting better or worse? Worse to me. Exactly. Right. That's that's why you want to give up this pick now. Yeah. Well, now is then, the time to give up the pick, and now you have some certainty for your future. Sure. You know if you suck, you're going to have your first round pick. You know if you're good, it, you can trade it away. You know Now there's certainty for Dubas. And we like... The, the bunting Crosby combo seems to work really well, but what I'm fascinated by the Penguins. What are these guys going to do? If you end up moving off of Carlson, my thinking is you can recoup a lot of what you lost in that. Pick. You think you can get a first round pack, the first round pick back? Maybe you'd probably have to retain. And who's taking Carlson and how much are you retaining? Well, you're asking all the right questions, but you recoup at least some of that. Mm-hmm. The other option is you kick the can down the road and then you potentially give up something real. You potentially give up like a top five pick. And that to me is a disaster. This is unfortunate. Mm-hmm. It's not a disaster. Eric Carlson had 101 points in 22, 23, won the Norris. Mm-hmm. Same amount of games. He played 82 games. That's so many games. That's a victory. It is so many. And guess what? He played 82 with the Penguins this year. Yeah. 56 points. Oh, because their power play stunk. I think Eric Carlson is way closer to 100 points than 56. Okay. And Eric Carlson is 33. He's going to be 34 when the season starts. Tough. Dude, It's listen, I'm not telling you it's a great situation. I'm just telling you it's not a complete catastrophe. Okay. Which if they don't make moves, though, is not a my, my thing with the compliment that first that first round pick. Maybe that player never plays with Crosby or whatever, but they now don't have it to move somebody to get better for next year is my point. Yes, that is bad. It's also spilt milk like to to me. The mistake was already made. It was obvious for a long time that it was a mistake this past season. Um, if they squeak into the playoffs, you can maybe stomach it, but. Coming out of this, giving up a pick somewhere between 10 and 15 is way better than giving up a top five pick. Well, here's here's what would have happened. If they'd had a top 10 pick, they'd have traded down, right? <laughs> they would have traded down, and they would have got assets and players. That's what I think would have happened. 
You might not be wrong, dude. This is a pretty good draft. Oh, I know. Especially I know. Uh, those uh, top five. That's why they had I, Celebrini there, but it's entirely possible he doesn't go. Well, that's why I, I thought it was going to be so interesting if teams moved up because the top three of this draft is stupid. Those Russian kids are crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, Ivan Demidov. I wonder. I don't think it's going to happen, but I remember what John Tavares uh, in that draft in 2009. Mm-hmm. There were rumors. Well, one scouting agency had Matt Duchesne going first overall, mm-hmm. um, but. There were a few who were like, there's this Victor Hedman kid. Mm-hmm. And you look at their careers, like there's an argument mm-hmm. that he should have gone first. There's not much argument putting Tavares lower than second, but there's Ed- an argument. Hedman's had a ridiculous career. And now 2024, 15 years later, oh my God, <laughs> um, you get this really high end forward in Macklin Celebrini and you have this huge kid in Demidov. It's uh, it's interesting. I I've spoken to some people mm-hmm. with uh, KHL knowledge, and they're all saying this kid is the real deal. Is he a center? Uh, so I think Demidov is the huge defenseman. Okay, and then there's another kid who's a forward. Because if you watch the Mike, I might I might be getting their names mixed. Up. If you watch the Mike Greer, uh, he's right wing. Demidov's right wing. Oh, okay, so who's the other kid? Who's the huge kid? Uh, Starts with an S. I'll, uh, I'll have to look. That I'm doing up. a great job. Uh, yeah. Uh, the my point, my thinking is that um, Mike Greer is going center. He wants a center. He wants somebody to play center. They want the top two centers, right? Because yeah. they got Will Smith last year, right? Um, and not Will Smith, the uh, the actor. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be great to have a one-two punch of those two guys, right? You've instantly taken care of. Uh, most teams' major problem, which is two great centers. I think it's Anton Saleev is who I'm thinking of. Demidov is supposed to be extremely good, too. And then there's Artem uh, Levshunov, who plays at, you guessed it, Michigan State. Yes, you mentioned that. <laughs> um, there are some really, really good players uh, that are going to go in the top five or six. Yeah. We've seen trades end up a lot worse uh, than the Air Carl. The Leafs. One. Oh. I, I think about... <laughs> I think about the Ottawa Senators trading away Matt Duchesne. It turned out to be a top three pick uh, uh, when they eventually sent the 2019 first round pick to Colorado because they chose to keep their 2018. They moved to 2019. Ends up number three overall. Colorado selects Bo Byram. Well, hey, how about this? The San Jose Sharks acquiring Eric Carlson Mm -hmm. for who turned out to be Tim Stutzla. Yeah. Wow. It was was a really good pick. Good move. uh, Yeah. Yeah. And like even even the Sens trading away Matt Duchesne to the Columbus Blue Jackets, like they get a pretty high draft pick there, and they end up taking Lassie Thompson in that. Like, there's been worse picks, the trades than the Eric Carlson one, where it's a twelfth overall pick, which isn't it isn't great. You know, you don't you expect it to be in the playoffs, you expected that to be sixteen or or lower, but it's it's not the worst thing to dig yourself out of. It's so funny. He's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. And every team that's traded for them or for him has gotten their ass kicked. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, somebody in somebody in our chat yesterday uh, said, "I'm hoping Detroit gets to move up so that Steve Eiserman can draft Cole Eiserman." Uh, Is that his kid? There's a play. No, it's uh, oh. Eiserman with an E I S E R. Uh, oh. He's from Massachusetts, but uh, he's like a super talented goal scorer. And it would be hilarious, but uh, I don't think he's going to fall to 14. I think Vancouver should trade with San Jose for the first overall pick because they drafted uh, Macklin Celebrini's brother, Aiden Celebrini, Mm. and they're all from the BC area. So why not pair up the Celebrinis like you have paired up the Pedersonis so uh, you can have a full team of Celebrinis and Pedersons. And and while you're at it, get both Caulfields too. Yeah. And then all the Hugheses. That's right. (laughs) Just fill up with like three names, your whole team. I like that. I like Um, that. It it is Anton Saleev, who's the six foot seven Russian blue liner. Oh, he was. Uh, Bob McKenzie had him ranked number two mid season, and he's dipped to number three. Which remember when we all distrusted Bob McKenzie with the Shane Wright stuff, and we're like, Shane Wright's gonna go one. What do you mean Bob McKenzie has him at five? And then Shane Wright kept falling, and we're like, damn, never, never not trust Bob McKenzie again. Yep, his draft list is the best. Yep. Well, 
Also, oh, we, Washington. We had heard the rumors too, but we were like, nah. Yeah, nobody believed it. Yeah. Like, he, Javon McKenzie put out the Shane Wright's not going to go number one thing, and everyone's like, no, nah, he's going to go one. And then it happened. And I it was say, unbelievable. I want to say Corey Promman put it out there, and we were like, shut up. Mm. And then, yeah, it went in a completely different order. Uh, I want to say that. Uh, I'm uh, I'm excited for this NHL draft more than most for some reason, and I don't know why. why? It just seems I don't know. I'm excited this, for the sphere. I'm excited for the the whole show of it because I had people on the stream last night telling me, well, they're like, well, decentralized. How does that how does that work? And I'm like, guys, it's going to make for better television. And they're like, drafts are never good TV. I'm like, you don't watch any other sports, do you? No, I know. I know why you're excited. This is your first draft on a full night's sleep. Yeah, well, that'll be nice too. This is. You you haven't been full time at this company for well neither have I for a year a year yet. not even a year isn't that incredible it's incredible incredible uh, Jesse double overtime last night Carolina New York mm -hmm. great game great game Carolina had if I'm not mistaken a hundred and sixteen shot attempts <laughs> that, was that the total shot attempts when when Igor Shosturkin's playing like how he was last night the New York Rangers are nearly impossible to beat. Like, because he gets you every big save you need. And eventually, the Rangers, because they have so many weapons, eventually one of them's going to get you. And like it, it, last night, it was Chochek who got them in OT. And after a penalty by Brady Shea, who's a secret agent that was sent by James Dolan years ago to the Carolina Hurricanes to commit this penalty in overtime, uh, in the second <laughs> overtime. And Chestnut then, checkers. Exactly. They're playing the long game with Brady Shea. And is there's just so many. I thought Carolina played the better game. They had the more shots. They had more offensive chances. But Igor was just on his game last night. And it was unbelievable to watch. And when you make 50 plus saves in a hockey game, it's crazy. It's such a big difference from last year, too. Because, you know, I, I keep going back to that series that the Rangers flatly should have won. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you go, okay, it's Igor Shesterkin versus Akira Schmid. The series is over. And, uh, you know, Schmid was great and Shesterkin could have been better. And the, I thought the difference with the with the Rangers offense this year and what they had against the Devils last year is the Lafreniere, Trocek, Panarin line is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It's so good. And Laf had two goals last night. We were on hat trick watch on the stream uh, while we we're watching that game. If you don't know, I'm streaming all the Rangers Carolina games. We started with game two because we missed game one on Sunday, but we are mm -hmm. going for the rest of the series. So tune into that on the SDPN YouTube channel. The that second line is such a great weapon because for most teams, I would say 25 of the other teams in the National Hockey League, that's a first line. Oh, yeah. at least. <laughs> yeah. They're running out as their second line. And the two goals last night were such backbreakers. And Freddie Anderson didn't have a bad game. Like, I don't really blame him on a lot of on, on any of the goals, really. Like the even the overtime winner, it was a scramble in front. It hit off of Brett Burns a little and then was in the in the crease area. Trochek shoveled it in like he had a good game, but it just wasn't enough. Rangers are a good team, man. Mm -hmm. they're, they're... And dumb penalties. Yeah. And the Carolina penalties. took a lot of dumb penalties. <laughs> and well, there's that Rod Brindamore whistle. Um, also worth mentioning Rangers fans. I'm sure a lot of you have already gotten to this. I heard you last year. Rangers fans were all excited because a lot of them thought they were getting Sheldon Keefe, which was wild on account of Sheldon Keefe was still the Leafs head coach. Mm -hmm. And then the rumor comes out that they're probably getting Peter Laviolette and they were all mad. It's been pretty good. He has. Mm -hmm. I remember. It me, just it didn't end well in Nashville. Uh, well, I just remember. It, I mean, does it ever end well no. for a coach? No. That's why you don't have the job anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, I remember we were going through Laviolette's resume on the show. And by the end of it, I was like, wait a minute. Why are people upset about this? Yeah. <laughs> like, all right. You know, is he the best with young players? Which he's been pretty good in New York. Is he the best with this? With it? He routinely goes on deep runs. Mm -hmm. And here he is uh, up 2-0 on the Carolina Hurricanes, who are a friggin' wagon. They're such a good team. And you want to talk about frustrated teams around the NHL, teams who think they're right there. That's a team that's right there. Mm -hmm. They have more That's reason. a real right there team. Mm -hmm. They have more reason. to. They should not be playing the New York Rangers in the second round. That's insane um, for the season that they had. But... Man, how how are you not just tearing out your hair 
if if you cheer for the the hurricane trocheck former hurricane laviolette he was the head coach when they won was he not yes he was in 2006 oh five oh six yeah. he was the head coach yep. when oh the boy coming won. back to haunt them like, yeah you come back and you take this series maybe we'll i wonder see. if he went to paul maurice for advice to, maybe. to beat them the way that mm. that M- a Montgomery did with Babcock. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there were so many bad jokes, like bad just jokes. shit quotes. Um, and that was one. I want to I want to ask quickly about some of the other games here. Obviously, um, Florida got beat up by Boston pretty good. Is that a, an effect of Florida was off for a week and Boston wasn't? Um, I think Boston did a good job capitalizing on their opportunities, and they they um, capitalized on momentum. Because I, I watched that game mm-hmm. and leading up to the Bruins' first goal, I thought Florida was way better. Um, they controlled it. And Boston's holding the fort and holding the fort and holding the fort. And Panthers go up one nothing, And I'm like, okay, that's about what I expected. Then Boston, they get their chances. And the moment I changed, well... The moment I considered changing my mind on this series wasn't the fact that the Bruins won. It's seeing uh, it was it was Jeremy Swayman and I don't remember who his teammate was. Maybe Trent Frederick. They're on the ground in front of the crease. He's just made a save, and they look at each other and start laughing. Huh. I was just like, "Oh boy, they're All confident right. now. Dude, yeah. This might be a little different." I mean, Bruins. I mean, you, you, you look at. Swayman's 950 save percentage he had against the Leafs. And you're like, ah, there's no way he can keep that up. Go look at Tim Thomas, dude, when they won the cup in 2011. Oh, you can get hot. You can get hot. Well, and there was a good enough team that if, like, who is the best goalie remaining in these playoffs? Numerically, it's him. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to count the 17 games Freddie Anderson played in the regular season or whatever it was, Lee fans going, man, I wish we had him back. I'm like, no, you don't. He he was injured the whole year. That's revisionist. <laughs> Stop it. That's revisionist. Go watch go watch his playoff games. No, you don't. Yeah, it's no, it's revision. Uh, but in terms of how goalies are performing in these playoffs, it's him. Ottinger, though. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's pretty good. He's pretty he had good. a slow start. Yeah. Uh, I thought against Vegas sure. and then he turned it on. Dude, this is the thing. Like none of those guys, like even Shesterkin, who's performing very well, like none of them are close. No. To the way. He's I qu- think I think Shesterkin's pretty close. He's Especially. undefeated. How many OTs could you have gone to last night, Jesse? How many were yeah, he's they, undefeated? He's undefeated right now. Yeah, that's Damn. <laughs> he just had a 50 save o- double OT win. I don't know. If yeah, but he allowed three goals. Bum. <laughs> I don't know if the gap's um, that far. <laughs> okay, fine. I would say it's Swayman one. Yeah. Shesterkin two. And then there's a bit of a gap. And the Bruins are performing well enough that they can they can ride this goalie to a deep run. I still like it's funny, like. They don't perform like anything special. They really don't. Hmm. Um, They just play really tight, really responsible. They avoid stupid penalties for the most part. They have some high-end talent, but for the most part, they just grind you. They just grind you. And the Panthers big-time miss Sam Bennett. Mm -hmm. Isn't it funny that at one point in our lives, Swayman was benched for Allmark in Game 2 of the Leafs series? Oh, it's easily <laughs> the w- worst decision the Bruins made in that series. You look back on it They've been doing now, that for 20 games. Uh, yes. Then- you look back on it and you say the logic is there. That's it. That's what they did all season long. You they went one, two, one, two, one, two. But then you look at it now and you say, why? I feel like we have this discussion every year because some team tries to get cute and it hasn't worked yet. No, the playoffs are different. I think they learned their lesson last year. Yeah. After the after oh, No, they didn't. Like the, oh yeah, no! Mean, I think they did. They learned their lesson in that they went to him early to see what they had. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. I, and then, and that's then, because Allmark was their starter last year. I wish the Leafs, in retrospect, had thrown the kitchen sink at Swayman in Game Three. Oh yeah, this so is our opportunity. We yeah. got to kill this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I heard some discussion about starting Allmark in Game One, so that you gave give Swayman a break from Game Seven to One against Florida. So, oh, so you start all Mark game uh, one versus Florida. So you give Swayman the extra little, come yeah, on. because you have two starting goaltenders, which they do, which is a crazy luxury that no other team has really. You might as well give all Mark that game one start and you give him the rest instead of going on two days rest. But like if your goaltender is 25 
I would expect them to be okay. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Well, especially yeah. since the Leafs didn't exactly test them all that much in the previous <laughs> series. Like there were shots, there were scrambles, but it wasn't. You remember that picture of Bobrovsky last year in the conference fi- finals, and he had like lost twelve pounds. <laughs> he was just oh, a yeah. rake. Like oh, there was nothing left of him. I didn't. Swayman wasn't put to the test the way you would hope. Well, y- you know what's funny? Um, there, there are times where, like, I look at 2011, and you know the backup to Tim Thomas was Tuka Rask. Yeah, <laughs> and the Bruins refused. But then you look at a time where a team probably should have moved off their goalie sooner. 2015, the Tampa Bay Lightning played a broken and half dead Ben Bishop. In favor of their rookie backup. Do you remember who that was? Vasilevsky. It was fucking Vasilevsky. No, we can't we can't put Andre Vasilevsky in this position. Didn't they miss the playoffs <laughs> the next year too? Uh, it was like there were a weird year there where they missed the playoffs and got Drew in. Two years later. Um oh, uh I don't remember, right? but two they years were like a top was... three pick or something, and then they got Sergachev out of Drew in. Twenty seventeen was the year the Leafs made it and Tampa should have, but didn't because everybody was hurt. Right. That's what it was. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, 16, I don't remember. I also just want to quickly touch on the Avalanche and Stars, which also went to overtime last night. Jesse, by the way, mm. how many more OTs could you have handled on that stream? A million. Could, could, could you have kept going? going? Yeah, yeah. No, it was fun. Uh, we had a blast. Avalanche Stars. They are fun. Those streams are awesome. Yeah. Uh, the the fact that Miles Wood ends this, it was a pretty good game. Oh, yeah. Like, those are those are the kind of players you... Like, you need the Miles Wood game. You know what I mean? Like, what, What's that like? Oh, this is this is what I we I, need the Thomas Placanitz game, dude. Not to make it about the Leafs, but like, dude, you and I know, I know, I know, <laughs> but like, you you need that game where you can go. Here's some depth, dude. Mm-hmm. You want to let's make this about the Leafs. Watching Dallas and Colorado play hockey, Leafs couldn't beat either of those teams. No. No, like no, I. Like, uh, <laughs> now, why? Why do you say that? Because I think we're about to have a very interesting conversation. Why do you say that? Because of the high end skill that they play with, and the depth, and the hockey that's just mm-hmm. back and forth. Was Was it extremely fast to you? It was pretty quick paced. Did the players look big to you? They were pretty big. Okay, so I have a theory. Uh huh. Move the puck. We'll definitely move. You're the puck. you're gonna you're gonna highlight this game in particular, but my point is towards all of the series right now yep. the level of hockey that carolina and new york played i don't think toronto could compete with that either i think you're right yes i think you i think you're 100 right and but i i, I dallas, know i know your theory go ahead i know dallas and colorado <laughs> dude the low camera <laughs> angle <laughs> camera in the arena <laughs> there's only a handful of maddie might know this better than me because because uh you you do uh the she works pr- for production mm-hmm. and all yeah. that um I want to say both Calgary and Edmonton have the low angle. Florida, yeah, has the low angle. And the, is, the Sharks' angle is weird, but the Sharks' angle high. high. The Sharks yeah. have the worst angle, and the, and the weird lighting and yeah. lighting. Yeah, um, the, no, and they Dallas. need something new going on there. And here, if we could if replace we could the light up the Maddie mic oh, for, sure. just for a sec, the the low camera angle makes it feel like breakneck pace, doesn't it? Yeah, I would say so. A- am I missing anyone? I know there's four. Um. So, well, I haven't done every single arena, so I can't speak on like all of them. But definitely, yeah. the Sharks is like brutal, and also Arizona's lighting was horrible. Wow. Oh yeah. But it's that, not that's no arena. surprise. But yeah. 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 It's no. It's not just... too knowledgeable on that sub- subject. But yeah. Oh okay. Well, like I just I remember watching. Uh, I think it was Dallas Vegas game seven, and I was just like, why do they all look like superheroes? Yeah. And I went, oh, because they look way bigger and way faster because of the camera angle. And extra frustrating about all that. I don't know if it's a cultural thing or what, but Dallas fans just sort of stand throughout the game. Hmm. If the puck is on their side of the ice, everyone's standing. That's a football thing. Yeah. it's, And I'm not telling them to sit down because no, it's great. we want Toronto to act learn alive sometimes um the bang dude is hilarious yeah, biz has got a war going on with one of the dallas fans it's pretty funny i you know what i was like that's kind of obnoxious and then he belly bumped the <laughs> glass and i'm like nope never mind that's really funny yeah. <laughs> um, there was a there was a guy one of the nashville games 
it, he just stood throughout while everyone was sitting. And I'm like, I hope you can fight. Mm. I really hope you can fight. One thing with the Dallas uh, Colorado game that happened last night, Miles Wood scoring the OT winner is the one thing he showed on that play is his pure speed. And NHL Edge has been pretty useless for a lot of things, except for tracking the speed of players, because the other things they show they have, you can't sort by player you can only sort by percentile so the only kind of metrics that really matter in terms of nhl edge are the speed ones so i looked up miles wood speed on nhl edge and the eye test lends to what miles wood always demonstrates on the ice he is one of the fastest people on planet earth on an nhl rink he is in the 98th percentile through this past regular season of top skating speed and speed bursts over 32 kph and he's probably wow, nhl edge is useful for something this is the only thing and that, I want to emphi- emphasize that this is the only thing it's good at. And he, the one of the few people in the league, like he's ahead of almost everybody in the league. And one of the few people ahead of him, I'm willing to bet is Nathan McKinnon. <laughs> like I'm willing to bet is one of his uh, line mates. Mm-hmm. I, it would be fun if you could sort by player. But the way the NHL wants it is that you can't make fun of guys who are at the bottom. So they don't give you the ability Boo. to just sort by all players. But I can Boo. check if you want to give me Miles a Miles Wood is so here. fast that he's lost some teeth in the I can check to okay. see what percentile Nathan McKinnon is. Like, in. okay, if there were a bunch of really good players at the bottom, we would all come to the same conclusion. Like, oh, it doesn't matter. They don't want you to come to that conclusion. <laughs> no, no. Like, oh, it doesn't matter that they're slow. You know what I mean? No, but like if there's a bad player who's yeah. slow, it's it's all right. We already think they're bad. Right. But if say say Marner is at the bottom and next to he's him He's not. Right, but like hypothetically, I'll yeah. give you somebody else. Let's say let's say Matthews is at the bottom sure. next to Noah Gregor. People might screen cap that and be like, aha, he's there. Look at this, you loser. And the NHL is trying to avoid that for some reason. Like, that's their thing what, behind it. Yeah, I think, what was it? Uh, uh, Greg Wyshynski did a deep dive on this. And to get to the bottom of any stat, it takes like two and a half hours. Mm-hmm. And this one there, you can't. Like, it's not <laughs> You possible. can't scroll down. Like, you no, can't. This, one, this is ridiculous. just the percentile. Steven, your brain is correct. Your theory. If we go to <laughs> NHL Edge and we check Nathan McKinnon's top speed and speed bursts over 32 kph, he is in the 99th percentile. Wow. Let's go. Miles Wood was in the 98th, so that means if we could ever see the actual rankings, we would know that Nathan McKinnon is above Miles Wood. There you go. No, I'd rather it based on percentiles, so I have to guess. Yeah. We literally have to sit here and just just calculate the percentages ourselves. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) But anyway, it's, it's cool that we know. I just wish you would just allow us to sort it. No. By player. Nah. And just tell us. What if we didn't do that, though? <laughs> Remember, people don't go to NHL.com for stats. I, I know there's... Uh, That's I, a direct word from Gary Bevan. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I, the, I, the cap friendly thing, they don't care about that kind of stuff. It was Yeah, cap, that's cap, what it was. Cap, don't cap, that's how long yeah. they've been the fighting. the entire this. story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who just won the cup there, Gary? It was friggin' Vegas. Fans don't care about that kind of stuff. General right. manager. Um, <laughs> where was I, Where was I going to go? Uh, the, the skating? Uh oh, uh Elliot Freeman was talking about um I want to say he wrote something somewhere where players want to control what stats mm-hmm. about them are out there. And this is a big problem that I have with hockey players. Like I understand privacy and all that. Um you are but what you're asking for is fundamentally against the idea of being a pro athlete. Um you know, I don't, you want to live a quiet life and you don't want people to talk about you and you don't want people to know the stats. Okay. So you don't want anyone to be interested in you. So the fewer people come to your games, the fewer people, uh, watch you on TV, listen on the radio, consume stuff on social media. When contract time comes around, you better be asking for league men. Don't ask for a dollar over league men. Because you are doing the bare minimum. Embrace being a pro athlete. What the? F- How are you? No, 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 no. no. I, I want. I want. <laughs> I want everything, and I don't want to have to pay the price for it. You're a pro athlete. What was you? I'm. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry that you got good at hockey overnight and only just discovered this. You didn't have an entire lifetime of trying so fucking hard to make the NHL just to make the NHL and be like, what, what, what are people watching me for? And like a bunch of these guys have like dads and uncles Here, who Steve, were in the Steve, NHL. Steve, wouldn't what, it be cool? Like, <laughs> wouldn't it be cool if we got to do this show mm-hmm. and nobody ever disagreed with us? Right. Wouldn't that be cool? Or listened. Or even, well, no, we want them to listen. We just don't want them to have an opinion. No, no, no. Adam, see, for this comparable to be apples to apples, uh-huh. we would want all the money. Like, we need advertisers and we need people to subscribe, sure. but, not, but not listen. Yeah. Or, or resp- I think the response thing is is key to this, yeah. right? Yeah, because people are interested. So What are we doing? I know. I know. Was it, no, we don't want anyone to be last. Okay. So, the NHL standings should just go up to 20. <laughs> Stop it, should, it should be the top 20 teams <laughs> and then you got to figure out the bottom 12 just no, guess. no draft lottery just just, just guess just yeah, with the first overall pick you'll find out next year yeah <laughs> and like here it. in the sharks get it <laughs> how'd they get it i don't know mm. if somebody mm. wanted to pay me like eight million dollars a year to play hockey i don't care if they could look up all my stats like what? <laughs> what the fuck are players hey, thinking? You're bad at hockey. No, I'm not. Anyway, I'm in the NHL. I'm in the NHL. Yeah, the fuck? Yeah, see, I'm in the I, NHL. You can look up how good or bad I am. I got a show. I got to call you out on that one, Jesse, because you are a rare breed of human being, and I wish I had a little more of this. And Steve, you can you can back six me up on four? this. Jeez. Not only that, not only six foot four, not only <laughs> handsome, not only athletically inclined. <laughs> God damn it! But also. But also the fact that you tend not to care what people think. And I have had that's that's something that's inherent with you, whereas that is something that I have had to learn over many, many years. Most of them with you going, Adam, I don't think you should care about that. I think it should be easy to convince an NHL player who's like, even if you're on the fourth line and you're making a million bucks a year to play in the show, it's okay that I can see that you're 212th in skating speed. That's I think, fine. I think we should get rid of the handshake after a playoff series because that makes the losing team feel bad. Um, and also, <laughs> they shouldn't have to be on the ice for the Stanley Cup ceremony. Like no. seeing it. No, I think that makes them feel bad. And um, if you're losing, I think you should be able to skip the last five minutes of a game. Um, and uh, like, do, what are we doing? What are we doing? Okay. I want the life. I want the millions and millions of dollars, and I want to, and I don't want to pay a, a, a price for it. Yeah. No, I, I don't want to trade anything for that. Yes. Yeah. No, 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 no. I make the money mm-hmm. because I'm really good at hockey, and that's that. Mm. God news for you. Not how it's it not how it works. Yeah. And you're no. in a business. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. You say that, and yet how it works is the way it is. <laughs> so actually, it does work that way. That's not how it works. Actually, the NHL begs to differ. <laughs> and you're going to get lapped and lapped and yes. lapped and as, lapped. As Jesse said, quoting Alan, yes, the revenues are at mm-hmm. $6.5 billion. They should be at twelve. Yep. There is. But go listen to Asian Provocateur. Oh, that's so- out today. Like, you're listening to this podcast, and it's already been out all morning. Go listen to it. Alan did a fantastic job on that. Adam Wilde, mediocre job, but he was there, too. Mm. I'm okay being mediocre. And no, Adam, Adam, Adam was Alan. Spe- spectacular with Alan. I think you guys had a great convo for it was 54 minutes of just straight great hockey talk. It was he, fantastic he, stuff. He also talked a lot about Utah. Mm-hmm. And that has been forgotten in all this. But you remember, Sean Dursey is a, a Utah HC player. Uh, oh, so shit. Alan's in the know. <laughs> Alan's in the know. And I asked about it. Uh, and it was, yeah, his answers are great. He also has a theory on what the Leafs should do. That's uh, like right off the top, yeah. too. Like, you guys don't waste time. <laughs> yeah. Alan's like, you Here's know. what you need. People, people, when they have private conversations with me, they know everything to do with the Leafs. You know, when he's talking to other GMs and agents, they they got all the answers. Yeah. No. No. I, I think what the Leafs should do, uh, whatever Alan said, is it's it's just people shouldn't pay attention to them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I saw people like like tut tutting at Canucks fans for going nuts after winning their series against Nashville. Have you? This is how I know you don't watch anything other than hockey. Have you ever seen a video anywhere of New York Knicks fans? <laughs> That's how I know you don't watch anything other than hockey. Right. Those people are out of their minds. 
Right. Where's this coming from? They're out of their. It was someone talking about like, oh, Canucks fan, they're gonna burn the city down again. Why did you bring that up? I missed. (laughs) I don't know because (laughs) the show's gone on too long. (laughs) (laughs) We do need to wrap. Listen to me, I sound like Dutch Vanderlyn. (laughs) (laughs) We have another fucking show to record. We gotta. Why did we get on Canucks fans? I don't know. I asked you last episode if you could leave me some time to answer questions from the fans because I got like three hundred questions and you didn't leave me any time. So Friday, Friday. Friday, we can do an almost all. Well, we're going to have a lot more questions. Yeah, I don't think we got to do press conference. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get to it. We'll get to them. Leave me some time. All right. Sorry, Jess. That's okay. I'm sorry. We had to hit all the series, too. Stream tonight, Adam Wilde. That's right. Uh, On Thursday. Who's playing? Vancouver, Edmonton, baby. Going to be a fun series. I hope the fans don't get carried away. Oh, I think they will. They will. (gasps) By the way, thank you to all the Canucks fans that have embraced me. Oilers fans, I can't wait to meet you. on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W-Y-L-D-E and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.